If that was you on the phone and you on the bus, then who was flickering the lights? I have a couple of interesting, we have a few uh, clips that we're just going to put up. We could turn the lights a little bit lower. I think you'll find them interesting. And then we'll answer some questions. I'll ask you some questions because you're so guilty, but forget it. Uh, but most importantly, we're going to get back onto the reason we're here, which is the success we're having. Okay? Uh, please, you can put it on. But like I told y'all, since y'all don't like that American flag he got on his hat, and y'all niggas, all y'all do is complain all about the United States of America. Why don't you get your monkey ass up and leave, motherfucker? Why is you still living there? So are you a hypocrite? They can leave, they can stay. You're not happy in the U.S. If you're complaining all the time, very simply, you can leave. You can leave right now. You to the flag of the United States of America. Pull me up some hands here. Roll me a blunt so I can smoke one for America. Spangled banner yet wave over the land of the free Damn. and the home of the brave. brave. Hey. Oh, say, hey, hey, oh, say, hey, let's get it over hey. the land of the free. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. The it's FYF Sports, man. It's Lamont, and we are back with another podcast episode, man. We got a got a real special episode for you guys today. We got a lot of information to cover. And we got just a, a crazy. We got we got some crazy stories. We got multiple stories that that can hit you from multiple facets today. So you guys just you know just get your popcorn ready. You know how we come. We come with all the facts, um, and we really gonna break down this particular debate. Um, and we break it down from all angles, as as everyone may know. Uh, Kwame Brown actually made an appearance on Ticket TV and got into a debate. With Ni Social, one of our subscribers and one of our loyal subscribers here at FYF Sports, and so you know we the name of this channel is FYF Debate, so we have to evaluate this particular debate. I really want to see how he did. Did he did he come with some good talking points? Did anybody get ether? Were there questions that couldn't be asked? Were there questions that were ducked, dodged? You know, we're gonna get to the bottom of all of that. We're gonna we're gonna cover that debate as well. But again, we're gonna get to the facts. And I really want to see the angle in this. You know, a lot of people are wondering, and this is this is a genuine question from everybody in the YouTube community right now. Kwame Brown initially came out and everyone felt that he was justified in going at the people that have been initially coming at him. All right. When you talk about the Stephen A. Smiths, that's very well documented. We know how he came at Kwame Brown's game. Yes, it was a bit of overkill. No questions asked about that. When you look at the jokes that Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson made on their podcast, was it really that bad in comparison to some of the other things that people have said about him in the past? No, but you know what? I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not upset with Kwame Brown for really wanting to come at those guys, um, especially if he's had past issues with those guys, um, or maybe he just wasn't the best of friends with those guys in the NBA. Either way, you know, no one initially really came at Kwame Brown about getting on these guys. I think the question now is, now that Steven Jackson has, at least from his end, at least from his vantage point, he said that he's reached out to Kwame and settled this. Matt Barnes has stopped responding. Stephen A. Smith gave his response and, and essentially just kept it basketball related. Um, 
Charlemagne the God who interjected himself in this particular situation, um, which he was dead wrong for that. Charlemagne the God, even though I felt like his apology wasn't heartfelt, Charlemagne the God actually apologized. This is what Kwame Brown asked for. He said, if you speak on me publicly, apologize publicly. That's what Charlemagne the God did. I mean, whether you like it or not, that's what he did. Now it's just starting to look as if it's just getting drug on and on and on. Like how long can you drag these few people? How long can you drag and get views off Charlemagne the God? How long can you drag Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson, even Stephen A. Smith and continue to get views? And what's the, what's the ultimate objective? We, I was watching Kwame Brown bus life the other day and, and a guy in the chat basically said, what's the, what's the end goal? You know, is it if it's not about basketball, if you if you if that is over with and you admit that your career didn't pan out the way it was supposed to be, what ultimately is the end goal? What are any solutions are you proposing? And I think Kwame Brown took offense to that because for whatever I don't know if he he actually is doing things in the community. He says he is. I haven't seen anything, but he says he is, so I can only take him at face value. Um but Th those are the questions that are out there because now the topic that is coming up now is is Kwame Brown now clout chasing this particular wave he got so much attention um, he got so much growth on this platform by dragging Stephen A. Smith Stephen Jackson Matt Barnes um, Jamel Hill and the these people now now that that is subsiding many of these people aren't responding many of these people are letting this die down at the end of the day if those dramatic situations die down, will this following and this support for Kwame Brown, will that also die down? And then will we start to judge and look at Kwame Brown based on some of the other things that he's pushing on his platform? Right now, his platform is getting attention because of the drama, because of the beefs with entertainers and athletes. But now we have to start putting that magnifying glass on the content that you're really promoting with your channel. And I think if you guys haven't seen it, and we're going to touch on it a little bit here. If you haven't seen LVZ, LVZ NBA talk, if you haven't seen his video, he made a three hour live stream touching on Kwame Brown's political views. But today we're going to touch on not just Kwame Brown's basketball history. We're going to be talking about his political views as well. We're going to pull up the facts. We're going to pull up receipts and we're going to just really put a magnifying glass on all parties involved, especially out of this conversation to just really kind of expose maybe lightweight ether a few people that I think who are being fake, phony and just interjecting themselves into this particular topic. And they really should not be partners or they really should not be participating in this conversation. Uh, but you know what? We're going to get to this. We have the debate right here. Um, we're going to start. We're going to start this clip. We're going to start this clip as soon as uh, antisocial is interjected into. He's, he's interjected into this debate. He's having a head to head debate with Kwame Brown. Let's really see how, you know, antisocial on this channel. I think he's like 0-2 or 0-3 in the debates. Right. So I don't care what platform he goes on. A win is a win, a loss is a loss. He really needs this to bolster his record. He's lost a couple of debates. He lost the NFL debate. He lost the NBA debate. He really needs to bounce back. I really want to see how he does in this debate. Does he come with the facts? Now, he's been on the channel. He's been listening to debates for the last six, seven, eight months. I know he's sharpened his game. Let's see how he does when he takes on Kwame Brown because he's been a big proponent. He's been a big advocate of Kwame Brown is now clout chasing. Um, and let's see if he can nail home that point in this debate with Kwame Brown. Let's go ahead and get to it right here. We're going to go ahead and start the clip. That's about hundred percent. Go ahead, bitch. Go ahead, Anton. <laughs> we not even five seconds in and, and antisocial is introduced into the debate with an obscene uh, gesture, you know, <laughs> you introduce him by saying, go ahead, bitch. That's what you say. That That's how you introduce him in. And, we, 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 you know, again, this is something that we're going to touch on and expose later. Antisocial ultimately just has a difference of opinion. That's all he has. He has a difference of opinion. I don't think it's hate filled. I think he just has questions. Obviously, it's just a debate. 
why, why the insults? Why why you coming at? Why you disrespecting that man? It's about disrespect, right? Why you you know again, ticket? You don't have to go at other black men like that on a public platform. I know if that's your homeboy, that's how you talk to him. Right now, all eyes are on you. Come on, man. We can do better than that. Let's go ahead and get to this debate. He, he felt like a shit. Hey, what's up, baby? Deanne? All right. Yeah, go ahead, Anti. The whole ass nigga ran again. What's up, nigga? Don't tell me your Wi-Fi fucked up. Wow. No, nigga. nigga. Nah, nigga. nigga. Go, nigga. Ain't, no, ain't no running over here, dog. Stop go ahead, nigga. This. Say everything you got to say now. Go ahead. Oh, say no. all that shit you were saying. Say now. Okay. Okay, boy. I ain't got it. Okay. Mr. Um, what's your name, Kwame? Nah. Hey, hold on. Ain't no what's your name, you scary ass nigga. You know who the fuck he is, nigga. Don't start it now, bitch ass nigga. You gonna let me talk You keep that same goddamn energy. You gonna let me talk You keep that same goddamn energy. Is you gonna let me talk about You keep that same goddamn energy, nigga. Is you gonna let me talk about it? What's your name, nigga? You know what the fuck his name is. Hey, hey, this is this is what Ticket is doing. It's a debate strategy. It's called filibustering. And and the goal of the filibustering is to get you off your game. Especially if you know somebody has some strong debate points. So what you do is you filibuster, you talk around, you insult, and you just try to get them off their game mentally. Because ultimately you don't have anything, you don't have anything of value to bring to the conversation. Again, I, I've made a number of basketball debate videos to Ticket TV. He has yet to make one legitimate basketball response into any of the topics on whether I eat there. Whether it was Jason Kidd, whether it was Jerry West, whether it was LeBron James, whether it was Scottie Pippen, whether it was Dennis Rodman, he has yet to respond with a basketball take to any of the Ether videos. What he does do is he will respond with insults. He will, he will, he will try to shame your channel. He will try to talk down on you. He will, he will try to shit on your platform. He will do those things. He will shit on another black man is and take things outside of the realm of basketball and we all know we all know some of the things that he's done in the past again with me and again i i try my best to keep it basketball i try my best to keep it basketball remember here at fyf debates research purposes only if you do your research and i, and I hopefully anti-social is coming to this with you know with a fully loaded clip and he's done his research i don't think this i hopefully this will not throw anti off his game. But again, it's just simple filibuster and tactics. This is what he's known for. Cussing another black man out, trying to denigrate him, trying to talk down on him, trying to embarrass him in front of a whole bunch of other black people. There's really no other goal into this. And it's simply because antisocial has a difference of opinion with regards to this Kwame Brown situation. Let's go ahead and get back to it. Is you gonna let me talk or not? Pussy ass nigga. Dirt trash ass nigga, fuck you talking about? First of all, like I said, bro, ain't no bitch in my blood. Um, dude, like I had said, when when you first came on doing what you were doing, dog, I was with you. When you started talking about the media and them dissing other black people in the media and they doing it for a white man, that's why I part ways with you because I feel like you did the same shit on your platform, dog. That's what I had a problem with. I said, if you're going to defend yourself, defend yourself. But when you sitting up there and you going at other black men, like you defeating the purpose of saying what you're saying and your message, dog. That's all I was saying. And I felt like you was cloud chasing for that. I went back and looked at your YouTube before all this was popping. You was very on your YouTube channel. Now, all of a sudden, every day you posting every three, four times a day now. That's all I was saying. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no bitch in my blood, dog. And if you feel like nigga said you cloud chasing, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, that's what I feel like you doing. And even though, you know what I'm saying, if you feel like what you're doing is good, but like I said, everybody, nobody never said nothing personal towards you. Everybody kept it strictly basketball. Even you want to say they was picking on you, they was critiquing your basketball tech. They never talked about nothing with you personally as a man. You went at Matt Barnes, you went at Stack, you went personal talking about bitches he paid for on gold diggers and all that, talking about um, him, um, bitches in the strip club and all that. Matt Bone with his wife, even though that was a public situation that went out. You you put more gasoline on the fire talking about that man, kids and all that. That's personal, bro. Nobody never went personal with you, dog. That's that's the problem I had. Even with Stephen A. Stephen A. Even Stephen A. Today I seen his um his interview. It, it's always been about basketball when they critique you. They get paid to talk about basketball. They get paid to analyze what y'all doing on the basketball court. And into your in their eyes, you won that good of a player, bro. 
it, it's no disrespect like the man said but in their eyes you just didn't get the job the job done like i said nobody never went personal with you until you went personal matt barnes didn't say nothing personal to you 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 came back with the good hair and all that then that man invited you to his gentleman pausing it right there real quick i mean you you know yeah if y'all have seen our debates we like to have one round we have our first round if this is considered the first round of the debate you talk about having a crazy performance just coming right out the gate i mean anti-social has already hit a home run coming out the gate he's nailing all his points all right he, he he's hitting them all in the correct order and he's hitting everything right on the head these are all the things that we've talked about and he's staying consistent with the facts the facts are that initially when this happened, as I said earlier in this video, initially when this situation went down, everybody was on Kwame Brown's side because we know he was justified in coming at some of these people who over the last 20 years, and I don't even really say as recently because Stephen A. Smith really recently hasn't brought up Kwame Brown. But yes, the people that Antisocial has mentioned so far only critiqued Kwame Brown based on basketball. And you cannot necessarily be mad at that. Because, you know, this is why NBA players get paid millions of dollars. They take the positive criticism with the negative criticism. I mean, if you're a fan of Ticket TV, you've seen that as well. If you're a fan of Ticket TV, you've seen that as well. We, we, know, we know how Ticket TV treats and deals with players that he does not like whether it's emotional or whether it's factional. And generally, most of the time, it's factual. I mean, I can run through a number of clips right here. If we look right here, Lonzo Ball, Marco Fultz, the two biggest busts in the same draft. Damian Lillard, one of the worst point guards uh, in the NBA. How, that's not factual, but this is his statement. You have to own it. All right, Andre Drummond is a complete bust as the Lakers lose again. A bust again? Calling people bust? You can't come to Kwame Brown's defense calling everybody else a bust. LeBron James is a disgrace to what the Lakers represent. LeBron James is a disgrace. He just won a championship with the Los Angeles Lakers. Breaking news. Kwame Brown wants to fight Stephen A. Smith. No, he doesn't. Kwame Brown has already said this is not about violence, but you're perpetuating violence. Kwame Brown, G-checks LeBron for being a fake activist. Kwame Brown now died putting other people into this conversation that did not even say a word. Draymond Green is one of the worst players in the NBA. No, he's not. He's a three-time champion, defensive player of the year. One of the best defenders of this decade, whether you think he's the best or not. He also talks about LeVar Ball, one of the most exceptional examples of a black father right now in the U.S. Ticket TV has made an example He's went out of his way to denigrate LeVar Ball as a father and as a man and as a businessman, as you can see right here. Multiple videos, multiple times. JaVale McGee is the go to Shaq and the fool. Also, talking down on another black man. Again, these are his basketball takes, but again, he's denigrating these players. Once again, you see Lonzo Ball is a bust. Continuously denigrating these players, talking down on their name for whatever reason. All right, for whatever reason you want to call it, this is. This is what makes the sports world turn. This is what makes the sports world turn. People talking about basketball, giving their opinions, all right? And we know that Ticket TV, we know a lot of the things he said are based out of emotion, not necessarily fact, because a lot of those statements in some of those video titles are 1,000% false, and everybody knows it. It's entertainment. So if we look at Ticket TV's channel as entertainment, when even though he says bust, and I've done it, I've already fact checked this. Ticket TV, in his videos, in his video titles, he's used the word bust, overrated, or, 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 or terms to disrespect players. And you can go do your homework yourself. He's used terms to denigrate players over 9,000 times in his video titles. 9,000. But yet, you can't. You can't in the same breath then say Stephen A. Smith is hating on Kwame Brown when you yourself, Tiki TV, you've been the number one advocate on YouTube. You say you're the king of this basketball talk. You've been the number one advocate on YouTube denigrating other black players, calling them busts, talking about their money, and really shitting on them. You got to die. You got to check yourself before you start checking other people when they want to talk about other players that you might be friends with. Right? Because once you start doing that, now it looks like you, Ticket TV, are now trying to clout chase Kwame Brown's wave.
All right, it is what it is, but I mean, it's not me, y'all. It's the facts. If you don't believe me, why don't you go do your homework and fact check it yourself? I've already done my homework on it. Let's go ahead and get back to this video. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. We see that antisocial has come out strong right out the gate. He's come out strong, right? Right? Can he finish the debate strong and actually get the W? That is the major question. Let's get back to let's get back to antisocial and the Kwame Brown debate. Now you can go. Uh, thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> I ain't never seen a man with that long of a question, but uh, <laughs> ain't no question. No, I came in. He told me to explain myself and what I was saying when I was on here for the longest, and what I had said. Me as a black man, what I'm hate seeing, what I hate seeing from other black man that's going at another black man. That's why I said I hated where y'all was going with this. But we done heard what you said. Can I say something now? Go do your thing, Ron. Do your thing. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, you said Matt Barnes wasn't personal, right? That's what you said, no. correct? Not as I know what we've seen in the no, movie. No, I'm just asking. It's a, one, it's a one word question. Is it yes or no? You said he wasn't no. personal, right? No, I okay. said he didn't get personal until you got personal. Okay, so that's a yes, right? He, he, you saying that he didn't get personal, yes or no? No, I'm saying he didn't get personal until you got personal. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so he got personal with you. All right, so we're going to move on. You seem like you have a problem understanding what I'm trying to say. No, you. So let me show you at the time when he got personal, sir. Um, you're not talking basketball when there's a factual statement being stated that I was actually traded in a trade with Mark Gasol for his brother, Paul Gasol. And that's all she was trying to get out. This is a fact. So that's not the, that's not about basketball, sir. I know you want to be a part of the go along, get along game, but everything I said was true. And if you was coming in here with nothing personal against me. Kwame, Kwame Brown, talking about a trade in the NBA, whether it's a past trade, a future trade, current trade, it's basketball talk. Thoughts on the players involved. Thoughts on if the trade was fair, equal, if it makes sense. Basketball talk. Kwame I mean, Brown. The fact is, with that trade, people felt like Dre West was doing the Lakers a favor by giving up Paul Gasol for pennies on the dollar. A lot of people, even at that time, a lot of people now felt like that trade was extremely lopsided in favor of the Lakers. They felt like the Lakers did not give up much. Now, ultimately, that trade turned out to be pretty solid because Mark Gasol turned into the all-star caliber player in Memphis and helped turn that franchise around or at least jumpstart the turnaround in that franchise. This is why in that interview, people said that was a straight up trade with Marc Gasol and Paul Gasol. Because Marc Gasol is the one that panned out and became the player that made that trade actually worth it. But in the moment, this is facts. In the moment, at that time, everyone called that trade lopsided and they felt that Jerry West was doing the Lakers a favor for making that trade. That is facts. And you cannot be upset about that because at, at the, the thing, Kwame Brown, you have to understand. And everybody involved, and, and you're lying to yourself if you don't believe it. This was a thoughts and opinions back then. It's still a thought and opinion now. And the only reason that trade looks a little bit better now is because Mark Gasol panned out to be the player that he is. No one else in that trade, no one remembers because no other particular player in that trade actually turned out to be very good in the NBA. That's just that's just pure fact about it. You can't get emotional about that. You can't get emotional about that. So I think Kwame Brown is really down in this particular debate right now because he's starting off on, on a very false premise. He says that Matt Barnes got personal talking about a trade. Well, talking about an NBA trade is not personal. That's basketball talk, Kwame Brown. You you are a thousand percent wrong on that one. Let's go ahead and get back to it. Then you would be able to see actual video footage. Fam, I don't know you to be personal with you, fam. Instead of all this talking. Fam, I don't know you to be personal with you. Now you want to talk over me. But there's a video out there that show that this young man tapped on somebody else. That's one pair of trade. That's a one man trade. Fam, you got that, mad because a nigga tapped on another nigga and said that? What about basketball, though? 
It's still basketball in the trade. It, that's what's not, the trade? That's not in the NBA. That's, that's basketball. basketball that's basketball related. You now you want to say it's basketball related, but the fact still remains is that you can't tell me how the motherfucking think, sir. And the fact is that this lady was stating a fact. And now you want to overlook facts because you don't want to believe that what he said was disrespectful. And that's your opinion. And I don't give a fuck about your opinion, sir. And I don't give a fuck about yours. And I didn't ask you You, to. you, you, you clout You're the one me. coming here with all this uh, male bravado and talking to us. Ain't no male you bravado. For, for, first, first, right there. First of all, what you have to understand, and I, and I think this, this debate right now is heavily favoring antisocial because I think now Kwame Brown is starting to get emotional. All right, he, he's went out of his way to say that these players disrespected him, and, and beca because they made the jokes, they made the jokes on the show and speaking with Jenny Buss on the All the Smoke podcast that it was a one-player trade, straight up for Marcus Saul and Paul Gasol, and that the other players in that trade were just really fillers. Kwame Brown. That's true. The, the thing is, the ultimate reality of that, how can it be disrespect when he said it was fact? How can it be disrespect when it's factual? How can it be disrespectful when even at that time, this is before Steven Jackson, before Matt Barnes, before Jenny Buss had this interview, it was a consensus. It was a consensus that that particular trade was extremely lopsided and that the only two viable players in that trade were Mark Gasol and Paul Gasol. That is not secret. You know, you, you gotta, you gotta stay factual. This debate is heavily favoring antisocial. Maybe, maybe Kwame Brown can bounce back a little bit and come with some more facts because right now, remember, FYF Sports, man, forget your feelings. Kwame Brown is really heavily invested into his feelings right now. And, and he's even admitted as much. He said he felt disrespected, but you, you felt disrespected over basketball talk. Similar to my debates with Ticket. You know, he gets disrespected over basketball talk. So he resorts to personal insults, right? The, 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 the histories and, you know, pulling up people's, you know, past as if that is basketball talk. That. That's when you know you, you're getting ether, when you start resorting to tactics like that. Now Kwame Brown is doing his own filibuster. And let's see, let's see if Kwame Brown can bounce back with some stronger points. Dog, I spoke my mind, bro. I spoke my mind. You you said you hate when other people get on other people's platform and they try to downgrade other black men and make the I white said, man happy. Sir. That's exactly what you said. Can Listen, I tell you I've what been I listening said, to you. keep telling me what I said. Damn. Cause we done heard you talk enough. I'm telling you what I said. We we here to have a healthy dialogue, but it seemed like you only know how to argue. So a can debate I tell is an you argument, said, sir. You just want to keep talking. I don't know where you at. Tell me when he come back. Ma'am, I'm here. Say what you gotta say. See what I'm saying? Everything is attitude. Say what you gotta say. Like, come on, chill out. I don't know you. You talking to me? Kwame Brown. You're giving all indications that you are getting ether. The man antisocial says, say what you say. He's been silent. It's time for you to elaborate on some of these things. Kwame Brown, it's a fact that you spoke on your channel about black men attacking other black men. You, you spoke on Stephen A. Smith, how he denigrates black men. You spoke on your platform about Jamel Hill doing the same thing. You spoke on your platform about Matt Barnes. And Steven Jackson attacking you as a black man. You've spoken on these things. We, we've all, everyone seen the Kwame Brown bus life in the car videos. You smoking your hookah videos. We, we, we've all seen this. It's not a secret. You, you have to answer that question. And, and right now you're in the middle of a, a long filibuster as if you're looking for somebody else to jump into the conversation to save you. And we know if you're getting ethered on Ticket TV, especially on a topic where he doesn't agree with you, with you're definitely gonna get jumped, you know, by by some of the followers who who don't really have their own organic thoughts. They just simply spew the same rhetoric that he does. That's just facts. Let's let's see if Kwame Brown can recover right now. Kwame Brown, you're getting the max ether. That Hall of Fame nomination, man, we might have to retract that if you can't bounce back from from this from this ether that Antisocial is giving you. 
me with this this extra disrespect like we know you just know. came you at me know. cussing me out and now you mad that i'm coming I back didn't at curse you nobody out you just... me and you having the conversation did i curse you out yes you just said that you said when i came in don't worry about it go ahead have your conversation go ahead i listen all i'm saying bro is that i'm stating facts and this is why people can't seem to uh like people like you and this is why people resonate with me because you okay. can actually look at a video that's showing what i'm saying and i don't have to lie i don't have to clout chase sir i don't even know what clout chase means that word did not exist when i was growing up well as a kid growing up i never heard of clout chase until you guys came up with it so i don't identify with clout chase i don't even know what the fuck that means how can i clout chase somebody when i'm not doing no talking clout chasing is an action whether you understand what the term is clout chasing or not it's an action just because you didn't know the term doesn't mean you haven't executed the behavior. Kwame Brown, antisocial came into this debate saying that your actions are indicative of a clout chaser. And he broke down arguments as to why. He said, initially, everyone respected what you did by responding, but now you're dragging it on and on and on. And you're going against the very principles that you have set forth and spewed out your mouth on your platform as far as a black man attacking another black man. You have yet to answer to those questions. Yet you've sat here for the last minute and a half to filibuster talking about antisocial's tone, his attitude, whatnot, and you still have yet to answer to those questions. What on video are you referring to? Again, this is why I like to take the time to pause and allow you guys to think and digest some of the information that's getting disseminated. Tell me one question, one thing that he's answered to. Antisocial came with his initial statement. He's followed up with it and doubled down on some things. And Kwame Brown Bus Life has yet to answer one question. And that tells me right there that that is giving me an even stronger indication that what you're doing is clout chasing because you are now filibustering and you're pulling one of the worst debate strategies ever so you can avoid answering a real question. Let's let's see if he can bounce back. You don't you ain't been doing with your argument. You ain't been doing no talking. Sir, a lot I didn't of say, I, no, I wasn't. Prior to them saying what they said on not one, but two podcasts, I wasn't doing no talking about basketball, period. And the fact that you can't get it through your numbskull, that the videos that I put up that are absolutely fact, that the only reason why I spoke up is because motherfuckers keep playing and picking and joking, and it ain't a joke. I'm out here making moves off the scene. And if you're gonna dox me, you said that's not personal, it's been personal for 20 fucking years. You taking money out somebody's pocket by diminishing their character the way that you're doing. What if, what if, let me ask you a question. <clears throat> what if uh, the young brother that uh, uh, Stephen A. Snitch said that Andrew Wiggins shouldn't be traded for a box of cereal allegedly? What if he was in contract and trying to get a Wheaties commercial or trying to do an outside deal off the court? But then Stephen A is saying something like that on the platform that he's saying it on. Is he critiquing his game? Ain't that part of his job? How is saying that you don't trade Andrew Wiggins for a box of cereal or critique of his did game? He, 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 did he say that about Andrew Wiggins? Did he say that about you? Sir, I just said he said it about Andrew Wiggins. Now you're just being rude. I'm when did he say that about, I didn't hear Stephen A Smith say that about Andrew Wiggins. Okay, so then sir, go look it up. Instead of just, Ooh, man, a lot to digest right there. Now, okay, so it sounds as if Kwame Brown has attempted to answer the question by indicating that he feels that all of the, all of these talking points about him, all of these things said about him are attempts not just to disrespect him, but they could have potentially hurt his ability to make money in the NBA. That's a very interesting statement right there. That's a, you know what, you, you know what I think really hurts your ability to make money in the NBA? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to pull up an article. I'm going to pull up an article. Um, okay. So the GM of the Washington Wizards uh, in 2003, 2004 season, uh, when Kwame Brown was on his way out uh, of Washington. He, he stated. 
Kwame Brown will go to the Lakers and be a slacker there. The kid overslept practices and only halfway practice when he did show. He always found somebody to blame but himself. Oh yes, so far his career has been a bust. That he had the nerve to talk about his potential legacy is laughable. This is the GM of the Washington Wizards. He further went on to state, we can't get Brown out of here fast enough and it has been apparent for the longest time. For the first two years, everybody here owed him a great deal of patience. From Michael Jordan to Doug Collins, who should never have taken him at the number one spot. His teammates were trying to figure out what to do you know, with the first high school kid ever selected number one overall in the draft to the media members who were charged with the responsibility of covering his career. But those were the first two years. 164 games, two more training camps, countless practices and film sessions. I mean, look at the progress of Gilbert Arenas, also 23, he has made in four years. Look at the steps Amari Stoudemire still has taken. Look at D. Wade at 23. There are plenty of 23-year-olds in the NBA who come to work like grown men every day. Kwame Brown ain't one of them. Can't get himself out of bed on time. Can't get to practice on time, if at all. Can't treat his coach with common respect. The word bust doesn't even begin to adequately describe what a stunning disappointment Brown has been. Verbatim, the words of the GM, Wes Unsell, or the Washington Wizards at that time. But when we hear some of the things that Kwame Brown has to say about a lot of the people involved in this particular situation, he has no ire for people like that. And, and you know, we, we don't even have to stop there. While he played, Staff and players within the NBA, along with Stephen A. Smith, were not, you know, they weren't the only ones to be critical of not just his play on the court, but what he does off the court. We're going to play a video real quick of the late, great Kobe Bryant. And let's hear what he has to say about Kwame Brown. <laughs> Well, I'm, 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 I
nervous. I'm texting the calendar, I won't make the free throw. Hell no. I go to the first day of film, man. Think about the day, man. He's like, nah, I don't figure it out. <laughs> so we lose the game. So I'm in the locker room, steam. Steam. We get to Toronto, I'm furious. And if I get calls, you know what? We got something that's happening with the time. I slipped in the ball, catch him. Oh, yes. <laughs> then he makes the shot. So I'm running back in the timeout. I'm screaming. I'm like jumping on Kyle's back. Like, Ooh, yeah, I got somebody that can play. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's what I had to deal with that whole year. You know, it's mush. I'm like, I'm like, get in that. <laughs> <laughs> That is the late, great Kobe Bryant on Kwame Brown. As you guys heard right there, I know the audio was kind of bad. You can actually, the link to that video is actually going to be in the description of this video. Um, but he was talking about a situation in a game where he told Kwame, I'm going to pass you the ball. Kwame said, no, don't pass me the ball. I'm, I'm nervous. Don't think I can make the free throw. This is not, this is not a, a, a rookie Kwame Brown. This is not that young 17 year old Kwame Brown that just got drafted in Washington. This is a, a, a essentially a vet, a player who's been in the ye league over four years, saying this to the late great Kobe Bryant in game with Phil Jackson as your coach. I mean, there's you, you're at, you're on the Lakers. You're playing with Kobe. You can no longer blame a Doug Collins or that Washington Wizards staff uh, for not giving you the opportunity. Kobe asked. Phil Jackson to take him out the game. Phil Jackson said no. Let him figure it out. That that tells me right there that Phil Jackson was the type of coach to give you opportunities, to let you play through mistakes to see if you can get the job done. And you ultimately couldn't get the job done. So again, what we're doing is we're talking about the basketball because again, I'm kind of confused here. At the beginning of the video, Ticket said it's about the basketball. So we're talking about the basketball. All right. But as we listen to this potential, this debate, or is no longer a debate, it's starting to become an ether in favor of antisocial. It sounds as if Kwame Brown doesn't want to talk about the basketball side of things because he understands that his career, the expectations of a number one draft pick, he just didn't live up to it. As you guys heard, Wes Unsell, GM of that team, clearly stated one of the reasons why Kwame Brown struggled to have success in the NBA. The man couldn't get up to go to practice. If he showed up to practice, he did not put in any work. I've told you guys this over and over again. Once you get to the NBA, talent no longer will simply allow you to excel. It's the people who work the hardest. We speak about this all the time in our debates. We talk about uber talented players who just can't figure it out whether it be injuries or just your work ethic with Kwame Brown well we can give him injuries but you cannot be injured and on top of being injured all the time also lack the work ethic and drive to be successful one of the reasons why the Washington Wizards drafted you overall all right and this was quoted by Doug Collins in the Washington Post Doug Collins after working Kwame Brown out in a pre-draft workout, Kwame Brown had a great workout, put in good work. He told, what did he tell Doug Collins? He said, if you draft me number one, you won't regret it. Those are the types of things coaches and GMs and people want to hear. Those are the things that they want to hear from a player that could, they potentially could draft number one. But when you get in there and they see you lack the work ethic, they see you lack the drive to be great, well, it's, it's the NBA. It's the NBA. If they see that you're not, you know, they can do so much to develop you. But if you're not, if you don't have it in you to get better, you're just not going to get better. We can look at players in today's NBA. You know, for as good as a player like Ben Simmons is. Don't we get to the sense that he, he may potentially have have hit a cap on his skill sets? Is he get is he improving year by year? But when we look at a player like Giannis Antetokounmpo, who came into the league as a pure raw talent, couldn't shoot, had no muscle mass, very frail, but year by year we saw big time improvements, not just in his physique and his strength, 
but he's constantly being a student of the game, learning as he goes. We see constant examples of the people that are actually in the league working hard to stay. And then we also see people who just are staying in the league off talent, trying to get by for a paycheck. So you can't be both. And, and this coach said, this is back in 2004. Wes Unsell, the GM of the Wizards said, even back then, he was blaming everybody but himself. Doesn't that... Doesn't that sentiment sound kind of familiar right now when we listen to Kwame Brown speak? It, it, sounds, it sounds like those undertones of blaming everybody but yourself all over again. Let's get back to this debate uh, with antisocial. I don't know how much more left there is, but you know, uh, hopefully Kwame Brown can come back with, with something a little bit better than what he has said thus far. Talking, you got to be abreast and educated on the situation. This man is not only talking about Kwame Brown, sir. If you yeah, he didn't talk did about your, a lot of people. If he's you a media personality. Did your due diligence, and I'm talking about the way that he's talking about people. Okay, that I'm a bust. What you're saying is I'm a bust. Is he so? Hold up. Jay is he Rose, the only person in the Jay media Rose, that talk about people? Jalen Rose played on the Fab Five. Even even Jalen Rose does not agree with him. So what do you? I don't agree with him Rose? name calling people neither, but they do it. Do you? Do you agree with um Skip Bayless calling Chris Bosh Bosh Spice? Do you agree I with talked that? About, I talked about that, sir. That, that show. Okay, then. Right. So, like, all of them do the same thing, bro. Okay, I ain't saying sir. right or wrong, but they so, be the personality. That's what they do. So, you asked me a question, though, and that's not what they do. That's what they changed the game to do. Basketball wasn't dissected and talked about like this. It was more in a uh, analytic situation. It mm -hmm. wasn't about personal. So, you never had me the personality Bosch, before Stephen Bosch A. Smith. Bosch has nothing to do with basketball. And I'm sorry that you can't hear that. I don't give a fuck what they get paid to do. I told you That's they get paid to. I told you they get paid to disrespect black males, and calling this. Kwame Brown says the media gets paid to disrespect black males. People like Stephen A. Smith, Skip Bayless, well, these are all sports analysts. When you talk about the two major sports here in the U.S. Basketball and football. These are leagues that are majority black athletes. There's really only black athletes there to talk about. When you're talking about sports media and, and, and how analysts see the game. All right. We have to understand that just like the game of basketball has evolved. The way games are broadcast. The way analysts talk about the game. The way we see something called color commentary being used. That has also evolved and changed for the ratings. So you see people like Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley, 40 years ago, wouldn't be an analyst. In today's game, because he's entertaining, because he brings a lighthearted, funny perspective to the game of basketball and he can joke and him and Shaq can joke about basketball. We see Shaq has the Shaq in the Fool series. Because they bring that entertainment factor, that's the that's the value. Now Shaq with his Shaq in the Fool series, did he take it a bit too far with JaVel McGee? Yeah, he did. But did JaVel McGee wait till his career was over before he said something about it? No, 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 JaVale McGee did not wait till he was retired to say something to Shaquille O'Neal about the Shaq and the Fool. Ultimately, while he was still a player, he said, hold on, man, let's cut this out. When JaVale McGee spoke, you know who had his back? The entire Warriors organization. All of the Warriors players. The network ended up doing what? Reaching out to Shaq, and we have no longer seen JaVale McGee featured on that show anymore. Shacked in a fool. It's about opening your mouth. LB, LVZ spoke about this on his live stream. LVZ specifically stated, there's no amount of money that's going to stop me from opening my mouth to speak up for myself. We, we saw a player who a few years ago was almost one foot out of the league stand up for himself. 
JaVale McGee. We're not talking about a, stand, a stellar all-star player. This is a guy who's been either a reserve or a role player on almost every team that he's been on. And JaVale McGee stood up for himself. You wait over 20 years to respond to Stephen A. Smith. And, and, we, and, and I don't even know if it's much of a response to Stephen A. Smith because when you went on your diatribe calling out Stephen Jackson, calling out Matt Barnes, Stephen A. Smith didn't even, he, he didn't have your name in his mouth. For, for whatever you think about him, whatever you think about he said about you in the past, you, you never, you never, you never approached or spoke up or spoke against Stephen A. Smith when it was going on. And you cannot lie and say that you didn't speak up because of the money because we've seen players like JaVel McGee stand up to the media and the power of the NBA, the power of some of these teams, shut it down quickly. Sounds like an excuse to me, but again, that's for you guys in the chat to decide. That's for you guys in the chat to decide. You know, Steve, Stephen A has become a villain in the media because of some of the things that he says. So I know a lot of people are ready to jump on anything that's negative towards him, especially if it's bashing him. You know, but I, I got to be non-biased on this particular situation. Again, I, I, I labeled Stephen A. Smith a shock jock on this channel. I know for a fact he says things simply for the views. The title of that video was Stephen A. Smith. ESPN ploy for viewership. We spoke about that. We know that it's understood that he says things to galvanize people and they shouldn't be taken with so much seriousness. And I think everyone will agree that he took it a bit too far with you. But but you, you know you're about 15 years too late in your response to Stephen A. Smith. Just my opinion. You guys, comment your thoughts in the live chat. Let me know what you think about it. We're going to get back to the video. This grown-ass man, by Spice, it has nothing to do with basketball. But you're doing the same stuff on your platform, sir. I'm not doing the same anything, sir. Yes, you Yes, you are. You, you beefing with other black men. You beefing Tell with other I'm black saying. men on your platform. Everything that you've been talking about, hey, you have been beefing name, with other black name, men. Name one black man that I talked about that wasn't talking about me. If I walked up to you and said, fuck you, I expect you to say, fuck me and kind, right? I don't do no talk. Okay, so. Brown, Kwame Brown says, name one person that he's brought up on his platform. That didn't mention his name first. I know for a fact LeBron James didn't mention your name. And, and, and you got on your platform and you called LeBron James a, a puppet. You spoke on his political beliefs. Saying he's bad for the black community. You said, so what? He built a school. That's what you said about LeBron James. LeBron James hasn't said a word about you, nor will he, nor will he, you know, he won't respond or issue any of his statements. And, and this is probably why you've glossed over dealing with LeBron very quickly. Because he, he's not going to fall into that trap. I don't remember Chris Broussard talking about you as of late. Chris Broussard, you can hate his basketball takes all you want. But as a man, he's highly respected in the sports world. You can say you know Mike Wilbon. He's highly respected as a man behind the scenes. You can say... You, you, you can say you don't like him, but like I, like, like I said before, we, we, what we have to do is we have, what do people say about Kwame Brown, the man behind the scenes? Because we saw what Wes Unsell, your general manager, general manager in Washington said about you. He said you lacked work ethic, late to practice if you even showed up, disrespectful to the coaches. Let's get back to the video. If I walked up to you and said, fuck you, then are you going to, if you don't do no talking, that means you're going to do something back to me, correct? Exactly. I wouldn't wait no 20 All years right, to do yeah, it either. So that's what I'm, 
well, that's what you would do. We different. I was doing my mama's cooking on the golf course. Everybody can't be stupid and put their hands on people, jackass. If you say if that's so. the only argument you got is because I didn't go fight a grown ass man. It, it's JaVale McGee didn't have to go fight anybody. Ja JaVale McGee was getting bullied in the media, getting getting made fun of on Shaq and the Fool, just as much as Stephen A. Smith was on you about your about your career. JaVale McGee didn't fight anybody. JaVale McGee spoke up for himself in the media. He spoke up for himself. And you know what happened? The team got behind his back. The players got behind his back. And they shut that down immediately. For, for as powerful as you guys say the media is. TNT. One of the biggest media networks. Media channels. Sports channels. In the United States. JaVale McGee tweeted out a response back to Shaq about his potentially being bullied, being being degraded, being disrespected on that show and he shut it down. We haven't heard Shaq say JaVale McGee in years because he spoke up for himself. Antisocial just made the point. It didn't take why, why'd you wait 20 years to say something? Well, my, my thing is if you're dealing with Stephen Ace or, or, or Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson, why do you say now is the time to respond to Stephen A. Smith? 20 years removed. I mean, again, to each his own. You feel free, like 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 Kwame Brown said, to each his own. But what it does do is it takes us back to that original. It takes us back to that original concept that Antisocial initially started his debate premise off with. It make it it gives very good indications that you're simply doing this to clout chase. Because Stephen A. Smith has not mentioned you in years, nor have you been relevant in the basketball world. It was Matt Barnes, Jeannie Buss, and Stephen Jackson who were having a conversation about a basketball trade, which in all honesty, they were given the same sentiments, making the same jokes back when they made that trade. You guys also heard the story about what Kobe Bryant said about that trade. Not to mention just that one time, but there are over 30 times where Kobe Bryant publicly disrespected or talked down on Kwame Brown to the media. But you know what? Clout Jason, Kobe Bryant right now probably ain't good for business, Kwame Brown. So we all understand why you didn't go down that road to clout chase those those particular uh, conversations where Kwame Brown, I mean, well, Kobe Bryant actually disrespected you publicly. And Kobe Bryant even said in his video, I don't talk behind people's backs. The same thing that he said he said to the media, he's basically saying that he also disrespected you to your face. This is what Kobe Bryant said to the media. If I'm wrong, then that means you're calling Kobe Bryant a liar. So when you selectively choose who you decide to go after, looks like he's handpicking who he goes after. Does this, does this per potential person, does he have a big enough YouTube following? Does he have a big enough social media following for me to attack? Charlemagne the God is one of the biggest YouTubers um, or, or social media names out there right now. Charlemagne the God actually was one of the few people that you went at that actually did what you asked which was apologized publicly and you're still dragging his name through the mud he apologized publicly and you have judge joe brown on there to to drag the man's name even more which is fine i mean again to each his own do do you but we see now that charlemagne the god is simply just gonna get silent he's no longer gonna respond and, and, and once you've beaten that horse for a week or two. What's the next ploy? What's the next ploy for viewership? Remember that same title that I used for Stephen A. Smith? The same strategy that ESPN using, uses? It's called a ploy for viewership. As YouTubers, we have to strategize. What's next? All right? And if you don't have a plan in regards to your content, again, if you don't have a plan, like again, this platform that I have right here, we're built off sports debates. We look at what other people say, 
and we debate we debate those sports takes. What what is what what is your platform built off of? I'm confused now because we're talking about sports, we're talking about disrespect, then we go talking about politics. What is it? And, and I've even given you praise for some of your takes on politics. Some of your takes actually make sense. Some of the other things that you said where you disrespected Brianna Taylor's family. Well, that's that's for someone else to judge. But a lot of people are calling for you to apologize publicly for making those comments. Let's get back to the video. It's nothing to do with you fighting. It's nothing to do with you fighting, bro. Why all of a sudden now you just taking up yourself? You could have been done this, bro. You could have been done this. So why all of a sudden now? Every time somebody say something to you now, you want to say something about it? I could have, but I didn't now. I'm asking you a question. Every time somebody say something about you, are you going to go back at them now? Like, because it seems that's what you're doing. Mike Wilbon, that's one of the most respected on um, um, personalities that they got in sports. What's your problem with Mike Wilbon like now? Mike Wilbon, but I don't. I don't like. I don't know him. I don't know him personally. The man. Okay, I just never see him as a disrespectful up. analyst. I know. I know him personally. So why you bring? Why you get to bring up people you don't know personally? But I can't talk about people that I shared locker rooms with and had interviews with. Who the fuck do you think you are? Is what I want to know. I'm, man, I'm just somebody on the outside no, looking in. Like I said. I know no, I, you you person. somebody who just talking. You just talking. I know you doing the same thing. Telling me what I can and can't do, and you ask me, grown ass man, why and when? No, 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 no. What what antisocial actually was doing was he's building the case that you're simply clout chasing and dragging this, dragging these beefs that you have, bringing up old beefs that have been dead for years, simply to clout chase people who are at the top of social media and YouTube right now. Again, I can't knock your strategy. Some There are some channels, there are some channels that are purely built on clout chasing. You know, if we if you look at the YouTube world right now, when you see family, family channels and prank channels, they clout chase out each, off each other all the time and have no shame in it. This, this channel does the same prank as that channel. Everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody's following this trend right here. I mean, again, there's nothing wrong with it if that's just your MO. That's what you do on your platform. But you cannot have that type of platform. And when somebody asks you, well, is this your the type of platform that you're going to have? Is is this strategy clout chasing anyone uh, at the top of YouTube that might say something negative about you? I mean, antisocial is posing some really good uh, talking points. And, and, and I think Kwame Brown, as opposed to answering those questions, He's just simply getting offended. The, the funny thing about this is, is, again, a lot of the things, a lot of the, the contentious points that Kwame Brown is making, the disrespecting black men, the disrespecting players, the media disrespecting black athletes. It's the same person that you shouted out on your channel. It's very ironic. It's very ironic. Kwame Brown, research purposes only. You might have to do your research on that particular person. I mean, I know he, he, he again, there's an agenda there. Potentially, potentially clout chasing you for the same reason that you're clout chasing everyone else. You guys be the judge of that. That's not for me to judge. That's just my opinion. Let's get back to the video. And he didn't do something. I don't owe you nothing. What might Will Bond do to you, fam? Man, you ask him, this is what you want to ask a grown man? Bro, why what? You, 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 why you keep going? Hey, that's an indication that you're lying, essentially. He asked you a very direct question. What did Mike Wilbon do to you? Oh, he did X, Y, and Z. That's what he did to me. But but instead of answering the question, because all, all, all antisocial is doing is he's challenging arguments that Kwame Brown is making with very good questions. Has I want you guys to let me know in the chat. Let me know if I'm missing this, if I'm missing one of these answers. Has Kwame Brown legitimately answered any, any point or question that Antisocial has made? The only thing that Kwame Brown has done is he's filibuster, he's complained about the line of questioning, and he's made excuses. That's that's eerily similar 
That's eerily similar to what Wes Unsell said about him when he was traded out of Washington. We're talking about a guy who blames everybody but himself. Eerily, eerily similar tendencies. But you know what? Maybe he'll come through in the end. Of, maybe he'll come through at the end of this debate and come with some stronger arguments. Well, let's find out. On that people, then, okay, right? When, I'm when I'm does it I'm stop? When does it stop, Kwame? When does it stop? When does it stop? I'm, I'm, I'm capable for every black man that you keep beefing with. When does it stop? I, like, when is enough enough black. for you? You beefing Ooh, with every black man that you come in contact with right now? Huh? You mad because a nigga, another man tapped another man on the knee and started laughing? I'm Are you serious right now? Mad, you sound way you more said you start. You said you started doing all this because two you men was laughing on a podcast with Jenny Buss because he smacked him on it and said, "Hey man, hey, hey." That was one trade. You mad because of that? He didn't get personal with you. That's that, not that personal. Made you, with you. That made you go on a tirade. So making me. So what you saying is excluding my name, making me seem so insignificant that you can't even mention my name in a trade. That ain't nothing. That, that's okay. Well, mate, they was, but they was keeping so it on basketball, bro. You didn't. You you. Can can anybody? Can anyone? Okay, first of all. Let me know in the chat right now. The trade for Paul Gusaw. Was Kwame Brown considered a piece that Memphis was going to build on going into the future? Or, or, or did everyone know that Mark Gasol was the centerpiece of that trade? And, and, and not only did everyone know that, it actually played out in reality where Mark Gasol ultimately stayed with that team for years and they built actually a solid contender around him with Mike Conley. They, they actually built a solid contending team out in Memphis around Mark Gasol. Again, you, you can say that you're disrespected. Again, it's one thing to be disrespected, but when, you, when they're talking about your profession, which is basketball, something that you get paid millions of dollars to do. Well, too, too much is given, much is expected. As the number one draft pick in 2001, much was given to you. You got the most money more than any other pick in that draft. You told the Washington Wizards, draft me at one. You won't regret it. You put these expectations on your back. The Washington Wizards came out and said, you know what? We understand the troubles that he dealt with in the first two years. But ultimately, Doug Collins was fired after two years. You had another two years in Washington that you can't blame on Michael Jordan and Doug Collins. And they said you still were a player late to practice if you even showed up at all. Disrespectful to coaches. Everywhere we turn, it sounds like you're blaming someone else for your failures. You sound like Chandler Parsons potentially complain, complaining about getting traded around after all those injuries when everybody called Chandler Parsons a bust after getting all that money. See, even though Chandler Parsons coming into the NBA didn't have a lot of, you know, high expectations, he played to the level where he actually got a pretty solid contract. And once given that money, he did not live up to those expectations. So what did we call Chandler Parsons after he got all that money? Even with injuries, we called him a bust. Even current NBA players stealing money from the league. Damian Lillard called him out. That's how egregious it was. Too much is too much. If you're giving a lot, they're putting keys in your hand. They're putting money in your pocket. Much is expected of you. And when you're in the NBA, the one thing that you can expect to deal with is media. The good, the bad, the ugly. You got to take it all. But you know what? This is what you got paid $70 million in your entire career to deal with. You got paid $70 million to deal with the media potentially disrespecting you when you play bad. You got paid $70 million to perform. You still got paid $70 million even when you underperformed. Again, this is 
it's just basketball to that degree. And I honestly, I'm glad that you were able to collect all that money and buy land and do things outside of basketball. Because at the end of the day, I always tell people that's what it's all about when you're in the NBA. But let's not get mad when Kobe, Jordan, your GM in Washington, media, the Washington Post, everyone said you were a bust. Don't get mad when they critique your game. It's not just Stephen A. Smith. It's not just Stephen Jackson or Matt Barnes critiquing your game. Wes Unseld is a black man who critiqued your game while you were playing. No response. Kobe critiqued your game live on TV while you were playing. No response. I can name a number of other players who have disrespected you multiple times. But again, is it convenient to bring those players' names up right now? Maybe those players don't have a YouTube platform. Maybe they don't have a strong following right now. Stephen A. Smith does. Stephen Jackson and Matt Barnes do. No one will dare say an ill word about Kobe Bryant right now after his untimely passing. That's not gonna be good for business. He disrespected you. Selectively choosing who you go after. Remember this ether that we have on FYF Sports shows no bias. The ether that we give when we go after people, it can be small time, big time, Stephen A. Smith, we've done that. Jason Whitlock, we've done that. Ticket TV, we've been there, done that. And you've grown from 20K to almost 300K now. You are not immune from the ether. All right, LVZ sitting at what two, three thousand subs handed the ether a three hour ether out, no response. All right, I think I think you caught I think I, I think you caught a little luck yesterday. The fact that LVZ was sleeping and wasn't able to pull up to that live stream. I would love to see you and LVZ in that same live stream together. Obviously, you guys know I'm probably banned from ever going back on Ticket TV. I've dished out way too many ethers on that brother for him to even let me back in. But, you know, I thought it was just basketball, but I guess it's not. When you catch an ether, you get emotional. Kwame Brown right now is getting highly emotional. You was not great at basketball. Is that what they talking about? I'm asking your question. They didn't get patient with you. They kept it on basketball. You wasn't great at the sport of basketball. Okay, cool. When, when was I trying to convince you that I was? Anti-social anti just won the debate. Let me rewind that back real quick. I'm going to rewind that back really quick. In, in one statement and one answer, anti-social gave the max ether. I want you guys, I want you guys to let me know if you think the same thing. Do you agree? He asked him, he told the man, he gave the man his final statement. On the debate. Excluding my name, making me seem so insignificant that you can't even mention my name in a trade. That ain't nothing. That, that's okay. Well, mate, they was, but they was keeping so it on basketball, bro. You didn't you 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 was not great at basketball. Right, that what they you talking about. I'm talking. asking your question. They didn't no, get patient with you. They kept question. it on basketball. You wasn't great at the sport of basketball. Okay, cool. <laughs> when, when was I trying to convince you that I was? Ether right there, y'all. Ether. You wasn't great at the sport of basketball. Statement by Antisocial. Kwame Brown responds. Okay, great. When was I trying to convince you of that anyways? The, the, the last time I checked, you was on your channel telling us about your per 36 minute stats. The last time I checked, you were on the internet saying that your screen setting was one of the primary reasons why Kobe Bryant dropped 81 points against the Raptors. Your three points and your 10 rebounders and your screen setting. The last time I checked, you were on your platform telling people that you were injured. You were telling people different reasons why you potentially did not have success in the NBA. 
You were telling people about how Michael Jordan worked you out three hours before the game. And when the game started, you didn't have any gas. Yes, you were trying to convince us that you were a good basketball player because you gave us a myriad of excuses as to why you did not have success. All you guys have to do is go back and listen to what he says. He's given these reasons on his channel. But when Antisocial says you weren't a very good basketball player and he and Kwame Brown responds and says, I wasn't trying to convince you of that anyway. Is that facts? Or have you ran out of things to say because you are dealing with a Max Ether being handed down on you? Kwame, Kwame Brown, you have been trying to convince us that you are a good player. You, you were mad at Stephen A. Smith because he used color commentary to describe your game as opposed to strictly talking about the stats, which he, he really didn't need. There have been other analysts who simply talked about your game, referring to the stats, essentially calling you to the same, calling you, calling you the same thing, which is what everybody calls you a bust. And, 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 and while we're at it, it wasn't just Stephen A. Smith that called you a bust. It wasn't just Wes Unsell. It wasn't just Kobe Bryant. It wasn't just all of these media members, the Washington Post, everybody who watched you play. You know who else called you a bust? Ticket TV. Let the world know that you were also a bust. Let's get to that Damn. video. Listen, now go back and remember that game because I want you to remember this. This is why Kobe Bryant got into a major beef with Charles Barkley back then. And remember, after that series, Kobe went end up going on the show confronting that motherfucker. Yep. I don't know if you remember that. But I do. Yeah, so remember, after that game six, when the Lakers was up 3-1, and they it was, went back to 3-3 three, uh, three, three in the game six, the whole media, bro, killed Kobe and said he was shooting way too much, trying to win the series by himself. And Kobe's looking like, do y'all motherfuckers not see who I'm playing with? Nigga, I'm out here playing with Smush Park, Kwame Brown, all these motherfuckers. You know, nah. he, that game, Phil went to Kobe. And, and this is the thing that kills me about people too, bro. When they say, oh, well, Kobe quit. Did Kobe never quit in that game? This is what happened. Phil always challenged his great player. He challenged Mike. Mike was passing it to packs in those guys. They was hitting shots. Phil challenged Kobe during halftime of that game. Told Kobe, Kobe, stop shooting the ball and use your teammates. Kobe like, look, man, using these motherfuckers, we ain't finna win this game. And Phil was like, look, pass the ball. Kobe comes out, I never forget it. Threw it, them motherfuckers threw that bitch to Kwame Brown three times in a row. Kwame Brown fumbled the first one, dribbled the second one off his foot, and then he spun on the third one and fell out of bounds. Yeah. And Kobe was just looking to the sideline like, is this you and me? This you really want to pass him up for the ball? So Kobe went and was passing the ball the whole rest of the game to all of these dudes. Brick, 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 brick. I know you remember that shit like it was yesterday. Yeah. He took one shot that whole yeah. second half. And the only reason why he took that shot is because it was forced against the shot clock. Right. And so people say, oh, well, Kobe quit. He threw the series. No, he didn't. Phil Jackson and all the media, you guys killed him for not using those teammates. So Kobe, what he did was he proved the point. He said, I'm gonna show you how bad these motherfuckers is. And so that's why he was giving Smushin' in the ball and giving all those dudes the ball because Kobe wanted to show everybody that was killing him. You guys heard it right there yourself. That, that's not me. That's not me quoting anybody. That's the, the actual video. So, so it, it, Kwame Brown, is that disrespect? Again, people talked on your game. It wasn't just me. He, he was not only reiterating the same points, that, the same things that not just people saw, the same, this is the same thing that everybody saw back when you played. This, this is why you became the brunt of a lot of bust jokes. And, and, the, re, and the reason why you became one of the primary brunts to the bust joke is because you were drafted by none other than Michael Jordan, the greatest player who ever played. Everything that Michael Jordan touches is gonna to be extremely, it's gonna be critiqued to an extreme level. And if it doesn't hold weight, 
that actually is gonna fall on Jordan's legacy to some degree. Well, what what Jordan is even doing in Charlotte is being held against his legacy to some degree, as we've seen Charlotte fail for a number of years until they finally drafted LaMelo Ball. And if LaMelo Ball would have failed, well, you saw Ticket TV's video when LaMelo Ball went 0 of 5 in his first game. He was ready to... Is LaMelo Ball a bust? He went 0 of 5 in his first game. Oh, he was ready. He was ready to label him a bust. Because everything that Jordan touches is extremely critiqued. And you're, you just happen to be one of those things. When Steven Jackson made that statement, the unfortunate reality of the situation is you were drafted by Michael Jordan. That's one of the reasons why you're critiqued so heavily. He said, don't blame me. Blame Jordan for drafting you. If that would have been Paul Gasol that got drafted number one instead of you, it would have been Paul Gasol getting heavily critiqued under high scrutiny. That's just the reality of the situation, but I can't even blame Jordan for drafting you because you're the one that went to the Washington Wizards in your pre-draft workout and said, draft me number one. You won't regret it. You held yourself to high standards. And once you got to the NBA, I don't know if it was the money. I don't know if it was the women. I don't know if it just, just overwhelmed you to a certain degree. But something changed when you got to the NBA. And again, people, again, they, they coddled you for two years. The Wizards even admitted it. Two years, okay. You under Jordan and Doug Collins, we understand. We see your pain. But you've also in, interjected Jordan into your line of fire. And you talked about people who mentioned your name and you're only beefing with people who only mention your name. I do not recall Michael Jordan recently mentioning your name. Actually, you, you, you said, fuck Michael Jordan. That's That was your quote. That's what you said recently. But we're talking about a Michael Jordan who gave you a chance by drafting you number one. And even after everybody, all the Stephen A. Smiths, the Kobe's, everybody, the media were bashing you, calling you a bus. Didn't Michael Jordan re-sign you to a one-year deal with the Charlotte Bobcats and give you another opportunity to shine? This man put another million dollars in your pocket, giving you another opportunity, another year to stay in the league, and he gave you a one-year deal. But, oh, it's fuck Michael Jordan. But the last time I checked, that man didn't give you one chance to play in the league. He also gave you two. Maybe he felt bad for how you were treated the first time you were there. He wanted to give you another opportunity to reinvigorate your career with the Charlotte Bobcats. Not only is you put Michael Jordan into your line of fire, you put Michael Jordan in your line of fire, you blamed him for some of the issues and, and, and downfall, down downtrodden points in your career. But one of your teammates... One of your teammates, Eton Thomas, actually came out and said that wasn't true to a certain degree. Your own teammate, Eton Thomas, actually came out and said Jordan was actually easier on his the teammates in Washington than he had ever been in his career like he was with the Bulls and like what we saw in the last dance. He said he, he said he treated you just like he treated any other teammate. He was just highly competitive. Hold on, let's just go to that clip and listen to what your own teammate said about how Jordan treated you and who the real culprit was with regards to holding you back when you were in Washington. You know, coming there and having the pressure of, of playing next to MJ and really Doug Collins. Like, you know, I mean, Kwame won't say it now, but I can say it because I was there. Doug Collins, you know, it was almost like he had a personal vendetta against Kwame. You know, like I would text him after sometimes. I'd be like, are you all right, man? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know why he's going at you so hard. Like he wanted to almost take his confidence, but it was really, if things didn't go right, he wanted to blame somebody and not blame MJ. That, it was messed up, but you know, and for playing with MJ, Kwame would, would watch MJ and watch. 
But with Doug Collins in that situation, I really felt bad for him. You know what I mean? A lot of people just look at it and say, well, you know, Kwame was the number one pick and, you know, he didn't pan out the way you think a number one pick would pan out. And I was like, well, there's a whole lot more involved in it than that. You know, if he, if he was the number two pick, it was in a different situation. We just saw a completely different one. You know, when, when Tyson Chandler went to the Bulls, and of course, he's a fantastic player still playing now, but he didn't have any pressure. He didn't have MJ next to him. He didn't have Doug Collins looking to blame him for everything. He could just relax and play. And what was what was MJ and Kwame's relationship like? I'm sorry to keep asking you all these questions about MJ, but very very interesting, you know, stuff here. Oh well, I mean, from what I saw, it was a, um, MJ just wanted to win. He just had a competitor, so that's all he was focused on. His relationship with Kwame looked alright to me. You know, it looked like he you know, pushed him just as much as he pushes everybody else. So I, I don't think that MJ was the problem with that. I think it was more Doug Collins. Okay, so there you have it right there. Eton Thomas, uh, formerly of the Washington Wizards, played with Kwame Brown for a number of years once he was drafted. This was a player who has firsthand insight on the relationship between Kwame Brown, Michael Jordan, and Doug Collins. And in his particular opinion, in his pr opinion, Jordan treated everyone the same and he did not have a major impact on Kwame Brown's failures. He indicated that it was Doug Collins who seemed as if he had the vendetta against Kwame Brown. And it was Doug Collins who potentially stifled Kwame Brown's career those first two years when he was in Washington. And this is something that the organization has admitted as well. They said the first two years, okay, we can give you a pass. We understand that you were playing with Michael Jordan on the roster and you had Doug Collins as your coach. Now we're going to give you a black head coach and we're going to see how things go. And then on your way out, on your way out of Washington, when you were traded, on your way out, Your general manager let everybody know essentially that you were lazy, essentially that you did not practice, essentially that you did not practice hard, that you were disrespectful to all of the coaches. Why is that? And, 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 and again, this this bus label has followed you everywhere. So you're not the when we look at certain players, when we look at a guy like Let's go with Andrew Bogut. Andrew Bogut, who was the number one overall pick. Was he a bust? Did he live up to expectations? No. He's a bust as a number one pick. But was he able to resurrect his career to a certain degree? How did one the one thing that we know about Andrew Bogut, especially towards the end of his career, defensive specialist, played hard, great leadership value to that team. And he didn't have the lazy tag following him around everywhere he went. He didn't have a whole bunch of excuses. The one thing that I hear here is I hear you blaming everyone else for your uh, uh, failures in the NBA other than yourself. All the while collecting 70 million, which for me, I feel like that's a fair shake to not live up to being the number one pick, to play 12 years in the league, live a lifestyle that a lot of people would dream of, collect 70 million, retire, Go home, buy land, do what you want, not have to work for the rest of your life. And yet you feel disrespected when people critique your game on the court, like Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes when they talked about you getting traded and you say that's personal. Let's get back to the video. Let's finish this out, y'all. But I'm saying you, you get mad because you people call you, you whether you want to say you a butt. Stephen A said it best. I ain't going to. Stephen A said, when I ain't going to call you a bust no more. You was, was not a, you was not great at the game of basketball. Can we agree okay, on that? So, no, I agree with you. Now, okay. when was I trying to convince the world that I was great at basketball? No, you, you get mad oh, because you are critiquing like your game. Shit, you don't know how to answer questions. When you get mad because people critiquing your game. To convince the world that I was great at basketball. You never did, but you get mad okay, because people so critiquing you, your game, why, though. Why, you keep why are you mad because people critiquing your game, then? talking about nothing else other than basketball? Because this, I'm keeping it basketball. He said, why are we not talking about nothing else other than basketball? I mean, if, if that's what you wanted to dive into, see, the confusing, and this is where it gets confusing, because 
coming into this stream, ticket 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 went out of his way to make a point. Ticket went out of his way to make a point. He went out of his way to make a point that he didn't want to talk about things outside of basketball. He says he didn't agree with the fact that you support Candace Owens, people like Larry Elder, people like Tommy Sotomayor, who a lot of people in the black community feel that these are considered potential coons to the black community who say things harmful about black people. We know Tommy Sotomayor, the comments that he's made about the black community, saying that he wishes there were a thousand more uh, uh a thousand more killings of black people. We know the things that Candace Owens has said, where she echoes, she echoes a lot of the problems in the community, but we know one thing for a fact is Candace Owens hasn't done anything to help rectify problems in the community. She just echoes them because echoing those problems caters to a certain political base, which ultimately puts money in her pocket. She does a very good job of echoing problems she doesn't do a good job of providing or actually stepping and getting her feet in the mud, giving and offering up solutions. Same thing can be said for Larry Elder. So, I mean, if you really wanted to go down that road talking about those things, well, we can have that conversation because I know somebody who would love to have that particular conversation with you. I know somebody who would love to have that conversation with you. He goes by the name of the one LVZ, LVZ NBA talk. Let's get, and, and I'll give you guys a snippet. Again, I'm, I'm only going to play a small snippet of what he said, but LVZ just had a three hour stream titled Hypocrite or Hero in reference to Kwame Brown. All right. So again, I don't want you, I, I, I don't even want to give you guys my take on the political side of it. I actually defer to LVZ on that information because the one thing that LVZ has shown me over the past few months is that he is highly knowledgeable about these things. Me and LVZ had one political debate. I went back and did my research. And I ultimately saw that he was right. Not only did I see he saw he was right and I was wrong, I actually had to go back and tell him, you know, you was right about that. I did my research on it. I wasn't right. I have to defer to him on those. I'm just going to, I'm going to roll a, a few snippets from that LVZ live stream. Because I would love to see, again, Kwame Brown has just now stated, look, it's not about basketball. Let's not talk about basketball. He knows his career was a failure, whether it's his fault or someone else's fault. He wants to talk about other things. Well, the only other things on your channel are political. So let's set that up. Let's let's put you in the ring with somebody who can talk that talk with you. One LVZ. Let's make it happen. Let, let, let's roll that clip. I'll give you guys a, a preview of LVZ's video. And if you haven't watched it, make sure you go straight to LVZ's channel and check out that video. Hypocrite or Hero is on Kwame Brown. Three hour live stream. And nigga, check my motherfucking record. You talking about, you saying shouts out to pro basketball updates. Nigga, you better give him a call before you ever say, I ain't do nothing, nigga. Yeah, check my record, nigga. I'm always really ten toes down for my people. Do shit. And nigga, check my motherfucking record. You talking about, you saying shouts out to pro basketball updates? Nigga, you better give them a call before you ever say I ain't do nothing, nigga. Yeah, check my record, nigga. I'm always really ten toes down for my people. Yeah. Look, you can't pay me a million dollars to shut up and be a bitch like y'all. Yeah. All y'all NBA niggas. Y'all niggas be scared to speak out. All y'all suckers niggas was scared to speak out back when you was playing, Kwame. All y'all was some sucker ass niggas. All y'all. Rodney King was happening. We was getting killed. This ain't new. Sucker ass nigga. Y'all niggas some suckers. A bunch of overpaid suckers. Scared ass niggas. Here it is. I ain't making no millions of dollars. I don't care the white man see me. I tell him fuck him. Talking about we his stupid ass talking y'all let them tell y'all Kanye was crazy. No nigga. Ain't nobody tell us Kanye was crazy, but Kanye's stupid ass. 
We knew something was wrong when you see a motherfucker with a Make America Great Again hat on. That nigga, something was wrong with that nigga. Just like I knew something was wrong with you when I seen you with that hat with that American flag on that day, nigga. Now, that's the, that's LVZ. His thoughts on Kwame Brown bus life and some of the things that he said politically. He's willing to have the head-to-head -head conversation. Are you willing to have that head-to-head -head conversation with LVZ? Or is LVZ's platform not big enough for you to have that conversation? And see, this is gonna, this is gonna be, we're, and the one thing that we're gonna see, especially when we start diving into that topic, we, if, if you want us, and Kwame Brown just stated here, let's not talk about basketball. My videos, my channel's about other things, not just about basketball. Even though you originally stated you got disrespected over basketball talk, which confuses the hell out of me. Okay, let's defer. Let's 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 defer to Kwame Brown on this. Let's start talking about the politics. And again, I'll defer. I'm I'm not gonna be the one to speak on why you said Brianna Tater deserved to die. I'm not gonna be the one. I'm gonna let LVZ handle that. If you're willing to have that head-to-head -head conversation with them, I I'm not gonna be the one to ask you why you support Candace Owens or Larry Elder and some of these other people who a lot of people feel are detrimental to our community. That's not for me to ask. That's for LVZ to ask, and that's for you to answer. But if you answer LVZ the way you answered antisocial, I don't think it's gonna be a very long conversation. It's ultimately just going to turn into another Max Ether. And then we'll be right back here again doing another reaction video to you getting uh, uh, excessively Ether once again. So now you have the opportunity. Now you have the opportunity, not with me. You have the opportunity to have that type of conversation. He said, t t you, you shouted out pro basketball talk, ticket TV. Dickie TV will vouch for LVZ. He will set that up. That is a conversation that will be great for the community. LVZ has had his channel taken down. You've only been warned about other people, potentially. You've warned, been, you were warned by Dr. Boykins that your channel could potentially get taken down if you continue down this tangent. LVZ has already had his channel taken down when it was growing. So you're talking to somebody who's been there, done that. So I, that, that's, and, and I'm sure that's a conversation that everybody in the live chat right now, everybody on the channel, everybody on Ticket TV, that's a conversation they would love to have. On top of the fact that you just said it yourself. Let's not talk about basketball anymore. Let's talk about some of these other topics. And, 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 and we can put you in front of the right candidate who was willing to have that discussion with you. Now, are you seeking an opponent who has the following, which will ultimately make you look like a clout chaser? Because we see that you had a conversation with Judge Joe Brown, someone who agrees with a lot of the sentiments that you have, someone who was willing to tear down Charlemagne the God even more, someone who was willing to talk down on more black men right with you and not offer up any real solutions. Again, much respect to Judge Joe Brown, Again, that video got you over a half a million views. All right. But will you have that conversation with someone with a smaller platform that hasn't been an entertainment judge on TV? Will you have that conversation with LVZ, someone who's really going to contest some of your thoughts, some of your thoughts on these social issues? And, and we know that you want to talk about these things because you jumped out there and you said, LeBron James was a fake advocate for social issues. You you called him fake. LeBron James never brought your name up. I mean, if you're willing to step out there and call people like LeBron James fake, well let's let's put your let, let's put your thoughts on how 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 you hope to fix the community to the test by sitting you down in front of LVZ and having those conversations. Is that a conversation you're willing to have? We will we, we'll see soon if you're willing to have that conversation. If you're willing to have that conversation, 
Again, not on my platform. You know, I, I don't have to get any benefit from it. I would gladly sit back and watch you had that conversation on any platform. Then if you want to get paid off of it, you just record it and, and put it on a Patreon and make it a paid video. People will watch it. If, if it's all about monetizing and getting money and views out of it. But but you, again, in this particular situation, you can't have it both ways. It's going to have to be one or the other. And you're not going to be able to keep towing the line around this potential clout chasing thing. Now, again, if there's and I want everybody to understand, I want everybody to understand clout chasing has been given a negative connotation. Cloud chasing is not necessarily negative, especially if you own up to it. Again, any sports channel, even including mine, we, we have to clout chase trending topics off the NBA, off the NFL, breaking news. Do we break it first most of the time? No. Just take it, break it first most of the time? No. It's either Clutch Ports, it's Bleacher Report, it's NBA.com, and we're jumping on any trending topic. If it's a hot debate out there, Steph Curry AI, whether it's on ESPN, whether Ticket started it, whether somebody else started it, it's a conversation starter for these debates. So to, to, it's just not its just not organic ideas just popping out of thin air. And we're saying, oh, we're just going to talk about, we're just going to talk about Bill Russell today. That's not how YouTube works. That's not how daily sports channels work. Daily sports channels have to talk about current news. So ultimately, there's nothing wrong with it, but don't say you're not a clout chaser or you're not doing this for views or money. You're doing it for the people. But then when we start to do our evaluation, when we start pulling the facts, when we start looking at excerpts from certain people like Kobe Bryant, like like Eton Thomas, like statements from West Unsell, statements from the Washington Post, it's starting to look as if you're only you're only delving into these conversations with people with a big following. You're not willing to have these conversations with somebody like a guy. I, 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 I challenge you. And I'm sure everybody in this chat will challenge you. Would love to see that. I would love to see you have that sit down with LVZ and have these conversations. I honestly don't think it would go the way you would want it to go. But I would love to have that. I would love to see that sit down conversation. Let's get back to the video. Let's let's continue to hear out. Let's see where this conversation continues to go. But I don't get personal about no money basketball. You the man. one that got personal with people, sir. I'm not talking about basketball no more, though. I wasn't talking about basketball this whole time. Why? I'm but sorry, why, why your brain you? only go to a certain level. But if see you how you see you being disrespectful, you haven't now. even went and looked at any of my videos. Bro, so I've been listening to your videos since all this shit popped off. And I was the same old shit. You going at another black man beefing in the media? It's well, the same I old shit every day, fam. People. And I don't get paid off denigrating and talking. Fam, about YouTube again. is white and people. So what are you talking about? You YouTube is your people platform. People it's white people. people. You don't own YouTube. I never Do you own YouTube? YouTube sir. Okay, so you're doing the same thing on your platform, but it's YouTube. You don't own YouTube. What black man do you see me going at that haven't said nothing about me? Fam, ain't nobody said nothing personal. I honestly don't know why he keeps saying that. Chris Bussard, Mike Wilbon, LeBron James. Michael Jordan. These people did not go at you. Rachel, Nich Rachel, Rachel Nichols didn't even go at you. You just created the narrative that she was trying to stir up more beef. You, 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 you said that she was trying to create this narrative of violence. No, not necessarily, because as I already shown you on multiple channels, including Ticket TV's channel, Kwame Brown wants to fight. Stephen A. Smith. That's what Ticket TV put. That's what I'm the one that said in my video. I said it was clutch points. Every time you talked about a topic, I was giving you the benefit of the doubt. I said in my video, clutch points was putting uh, um, doctor pictures up of you potentially boxing and fighting all these other people, given, given the connotation of violence or things having to come to a physical fight. I, I brought that up in your defense. So there's no need. So let's not act like there's only a hand select people inciting these things. It wasn't just some of the people that you called out. It's people that you so-called say are standing in your corner that are right 
right next to you inciting the same things that you're actually going against. You talk about, you've been talking this whole time about not being disrespecting and disrespecting players, but yet you're on a platform, Ticket TV, that is completely built as platform. What did I tell you guys earlier? And again, if I'm wrong, I want you to do your homework. 9,000 video titles, close to 20,000 videos, and over half the content has a video title that disrespects a black player. I showed you guys the example. Lonzo Ball bust. LeVar Ball disgusting. LeVar Ball bad father. Things of that nature. Kwame Brown, you were getting a lot of appreciation and love for your support of LeVar Ball. Something that he never doesn't get. I was one of the few people on Ticket TV to support, to support LeVar Ball publicly. And they all called me crazy. They all called me, called him bad for basketball, bad father. He's going to ruin his son's careers. Yet all of his sons are multimillionaires and thriving on and off the court. I was the one that stood up for him. You're literally on a platform that does all of the things that you say you oppose. You shouted out a platform that does these things. Not me. That's what you did. You told anti-social anti to do his homework. Did you do your homework? You're on a platform talking about being disrespected in the media with a man who disrespected you the same way any other media, any other media personality would have. He essentially labeled you as a, as a relevant plan alongside Kobe Bryant. Not me, but he's done those things. Have you done your homework? Have you done your research on the very people that you shouting up? And I have no problem. If that's how you get down, that's how you get down. But again, it looks ass backwards. So you're asking Antisocial if he's watched any of your videos. But on the very platform that you're sitting on doing this, this debate on, have you watched any of those videos? You're talking about somebody who will go to any length to look right, whether right or wrong. You're talking about somebody who's went out and publicly put out my information in hopes to denigrate my name off of mistakes that I made in the past trying to tear this black man down sitting right here in front of you and then deleted the video to hide it. You're talking about a man who's went on another channel with the same information and tried to do this on another platform, on another channel, and then have him delete that video, trying to denigrate me as a black man. Oh, saying, oh, he has a criminal record. Oh, he did this in his past. And, and I own it all. I have no problem. And again, ultimately, I have no problem with it. It was, I, I advised, it was my, it, it was, it was my, at my request, I said, please leave the content up. I said, leave the content up. Kwame Brown, everything you're doing right now starting to look and sound ass backwards. And, and that's not to disrespect you to any degree. And people are going to say clout chasing and all of this crazy stuff. But everything that you're doing right now is starting to look ass backwards. And once again, even in this very conversation, you're doing what your general manager said that you do when times get tough. You never look in the mirror and blame yourself. You always look to blame others. That's the constant theme of this video. That's been the constant theme of this debate. Antisocial makes a contentious point. You don't answer the question. You blame him for, ans for even asking the question. This has not been a debate so far. He's hit you with, as Super Mac would say, heat rocks. He's hit you with the Max Ether. And you have done nothing but fold under pressure. You're going to have a lot of people out there. And I saw Ticket DV's title. Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown. Ether's caller. In what world did you e Ether anything? Let's play the video, y'all. Hopefully we're getting to the end of this debate and we can just we can just wrap this up.
There's so many things that's wrong with this video. I, I, I hope, I honestly hope, I, I hope that he sees this video and there's no need to shout me out if you do see this video. But it would be nice to see you address some of these uh, uh, talking points that are being brought brought to your uh, brought to the forefront by antisocial. What about you? Oh, Except for basketball. Man, you, you won't. You, no, 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 no. You keep saying question. the same. I'm gonna keep saying what the same shit with you. you. Ain't nobody get personal with you, fam. I'm answering your question. Ain't nobody you get personal with you. Nothing. What black man? My question again to you, sir, is what? I'm gonna say it slow for you. Maybe you so personal and in your feelings that you can't get past them to answer the question truthful and honestly. What black man have you heard me go at that did not say my name first, regardless of whether you think? Again, he's repeating the same question because he knows in the midst of this debate, antisocial doesn't have that answer. I can answer it. Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Chris Boussard, Mike Wilbon. A lot of people who haven't brought your name up. A lot of people haven't even brought your name up, but you've you've brought you you've brought their names up. You blame Jordan for your failed career. You don't blame the white head coach Doug Collins, who many in Washington felt was the problem. Your own teammate felt that the white head coach was the problem, Doug Collins. You haven't given Doug Collins as much fire as you've given Michael Jordan. You haven't given him the same vitriol. You're on your channel and you say everybody else has a white zaddy. But your white zaddy when you played in Washington, Doug Collins, according to Eton Thomas, treated you like the bitch. And, and you didn't do nothing. You're not calling him out. You're not putting his feet to the fire. You haven't called him out as much as you've called Stephen A. Smith. You haven't called Doug Collins out as much as you've called Jack and Matt Barnes out. Or anybody else with a big social media following. The one thing we know is Doug Collins ain't on social media. He has no big following. This all goes back to the talking point that Antisocial brought up in the beginning. Is this clout chasing? Because it seems like everybody that you're going after has some type of following. Etan Thomas has clearly indicated. That from his vantage point, the biggest problem, and he said even went as far as said he called you and asked you why Doug Collins was going after you so hard. He asked you this. He asked you this. It was obvious to him that this was going on. He said Jordan treated everybody equally. Jordan was just a competitor. But yet, you've given Doug Collins no vitriol. You've given him no smoke. You haven't called him out to any degree. You haven't demanded a, an apology to any degree. You haven't created that drama with Doug Collins. You haven't put his feet to the fire. I told you, you've talked about a lot of people that haven't brought your name up. You vaguely brought up Doug Collins, but you've primarily blamed Michael Jordan for your failed years in Washington. When even the Washington Wizards organization admitted it was Doug Collins who held you back your first two years. And they were willing to keep you on for another two to see if you would ultimately catch on. And you didn't. And it took a black general manager to call you out. Lazy. Late to practice. When he got to practice, didn't practice hard. Let's get to this video, y'all. How bad or how good or however what they said was, name the black man that I talked about that didn't say my name. Matt Barnes didn't say your name. Did he? He didn't say your name. Stack said your name on the podcast. All right. Matt, Matt Barnes never said your name. Hey. What you call me? Anti, I'm a, bullshit, anti. Ain't no bullshit. bullshit. I'm gonna just say this bullshit. about you. Nigga, you don't keep the same energy, dog. You ain't keeping the same energy, dog. Hold on, 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 hold on,
you had a family to feed. You weren't about to fuck that bag up knowing where you come from. Absolutely. So if you had to wait, uh, uh, real men know what that situation is. That's why he's still cooning right now, holding on to them two jobs he worked. You feel what I'm saying? That's that's James Hayes right there who's talking. This is this is the same James Hayes who, when I said, when I said those NBA players, this, remember you guys can go look this conversation up. I said the NBA players, they need to go play in that bubble and get that money. They need to go get that money. It it was James Hayes who said that they need to say fuck that money. They need to. Make a make a stance on some of these social issues, and, and, and stay at home with their families. But he says antisocial is not keeping the same energy, which antisocial has been extremely consistent. And so again, he's saying antisocial is not being consistent. James Hayes is not keeping that same energy. All right, we just listened to a snippet from LVZ saying, "Fuck the money. If you get disrespected, you need to speak up." It's not about the money, it's about respect. We literally watched JaVel McGee. We watched JaVel McGee continuously get disrespected in the media. Again, it got out of hand. It was funny when it first started, but then it got out of hand. And JaVel McGee spoke up for himself. Ticket TV in his snippet, where he also it, re it, it alluded to you as one of the bums on that team, that Los Angeles Laker team with with Kobe Bryant, and he gave examples of not any other player on that team. He gave examples of how you fumbled the ball three possessions in a row, and how Kobe couldn't pass you the ball. Very very inconsistent with y'all arguments. Very consistent inconsistent with y'all energy. It's just funny when you get in front of somebody. I would love for you guys to keep that same energy because y'all call players like Draymond Green bombs bust. Y'all, James Hayes is the guy that calls LeBron James a role player. Completely disrespects LeBron James as a man and as a player. This is the these. This comes from James Hayes, who calls players of this era soft and, and, and bombs on every show, but today's show. And when you have a guy who's not just been labeled by the media and fans as a bust, but he's also been labeled by Ticket TV as a bust. Which James Hayes, you also alluded to Kwame Brown as a bust when referring to Kobe Bryant and those teams. And when you have this man in your presence on the show, your energy changes. And it sounds like you guys are kissing Kwame Brown's ass. Are you guys groupies for Kwame Brown? Are you guys simping for Kwame Brown? I don't know what's going on. Why can't you talk to him the same way you talk to anybody else on that show? If this was, a, if Kwame Brown wasn't here and we were talking about Kobe Bryant and the help that he had on his team. Would you guys keep that same energy in talking about Kwame Brown? Or would you guys be the same people running around saying that team with Smush Parker and people like Kwame Brown couldn't win a goddamn thing like you've done in the past literally hundreds of times? And when you have Kwame Brown in your face, no, it's not antisocial who switched up. It's now you guys switching up. James Hayes, I've never heard you talk more polite than you've talked to Kwame Brown. You know how people have their white people voice when they go to a job interview? All of a sudden, James Hayes has his white people voice turned on for Kwame Brown, giving the utmost respect when he talks. And, and you say antisocial is not keeping that same energy. Extremely odd. Extremely odd. And again, this is not something. And I, I'm sure you, all you guys, you guys know how James is. That's not, this is not just me talking. And again, all of these things that I'm saying, you can go back and fact check. If you really want to know how James Hayes feels about Kwame Brown, just go listen to some of the live streams where we've talked about Kobe Bryant. But see, but I didn't want to put all that out there because I don't want this turning into an ether of James Hayes. We're going to stick to the topic. We're going to stick to the topic of Kwame Brown in this particular debate with antisocial. Now, well, the the thing. Talking to you, nigga, don't you work oh, two now, jobs? Now, now you going now you going you going to change up on me cuz this nigga here? You no, cuz you can work two jobs. Now now you going to get the fuck out my face, nigga. We ain't cool no more. You, you can have it. Nigga, oh, yeah, no, you, you're, you're cool, dog, because you want this man to fuck up his bag and fuck up his career. I've been knowing you for years. All right, cool. 
Cook him, Jay. 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 Cook What's so crazy is Anti talks about the money that he made. Remember where we're at. We're on Ticket TV. Anti talks about the money that he made. You're talking about a platform that talks about the money players make, equivalenting them to being a bus all the time. How many videos does Ticket TV have talking about Draymond Green? Hundreds, it's the hundred million dollars that he got. How many times has people, not just Ticket, but people who agree with Ticket on this platform, say that Draymond Green doesn't deserve that money? How many times do people on this platform pocket watch LeVar Ball and talk about how he shouldn't have started his own business selling those shoes? And you're trying to dictate how much he should have sold his own brand and shoes for. And because you couldn't afford them, he should have lowered his price. Y'all talk about pocket watching. Now, now antisocial is wrong for talking about dollars and cents. Talking about money that Kwame Brown's already collected. Kwame Brown himself talked about how Stephen A. Smith said something to denigrate Andrew Wiggins. What if he potentially messes up deals and money that he had coming to him? Well, Kwame Brown's collected all his money. There's nothing that you can say to Kwame Brown now that's going to take back that 70 million that he's earned. The things that Kwame Brown has said with regards to money and costing players money, well, it's a reason why Ticket TV got silent on that because he's talked about players' money. He's told, he said players don't deserve that money. He's called them bums. He's called them out their names. He said they don't belong in the league. He's said things. And again, you're talking about Ticket TV, who says he's the king of YouTube. Obviously, if you're the king of YouTube, your voice is going to carry weight and have an impact in these NBA streets, as he says. So why are you out there denigrating the money that another black man is making, Ticket TV? This is your platform. This is See, again, this is why I say it's now become straight confusion. And this is why Kwame Brown looks extremely odd sitting, saying some of the things that he's saying sitting on this platform, because everything he's saying goes at completely at odds with what Ticket TV stands for. And if I'm wrong, let me know. Again, it's FYF debates. This is FYF debates. That's a debate topic. If, if I'm wrong, then come to my platform and, and, and explain to me how I'm wrong. See. And the, and the crazy thing is, I can say all of these things. People like James Hayes, people like Ticket, anybody on his platform, none of these people will pull up to my platform and have that conversation. I don't care if you have one subscriber. I don't care if you have 100,000 subscribers. I've yet to see you, I've, ne I've yet to see anybody on this platform pull up to LVZ's channel and have those types of conversations with them. You know, and LVZ is not going to open up his platform and allow you to come on and have that type of crazy diatribe. He's just gonna eat the you while you're in the chat. I will open my platform up. I'll let you come out. I'll let you come on. I'll let you talk everyone's ear off, either yourself, and then I'm gonna go ahead and finish you off as well. I've given everyone the opportunity to come on my platform and do that. I block no one. I don't mute anybody. We laugh, we joke, we chop it up, we talk sports, and we all cool. Like, but really cool. Not fake, cool. Man, we're going to wrap it up right here because, again, this conversation from this point forward, obviously it goes left. Kwame Brown talks about how he doesn't like to see black men go at it. James starts to threaten antisocial. James starts to say he's going to pull up in Dallas and call people to go do something to him. And it really gets out of hand while Kwame, social, Kwame Brown just sits back and laughs while two black men go at it like that. All, all because they didn't like anti-socials debate talking points. And so what that tells me right there is, again, people like James, they can't they can't stand in the arena with me and have a debate on equal footing. This is why they get ether. They can't have a debate on equal footing. Why? They're too emotional. They don't like what you say. They get emotional. They want to be internet gangsters and say they're going to pull up on you. All right. That's what they say they're going to do. Remember, th those th those are things that Kwame Brown alluded to talking to Steven Jackson. But when James Hayes starts to do it, 
he lets it go by the wayside. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and play it because I want you guys to watch the hypocrisy. Remember what LVZ put in his video, hypocrisy. You're gonna see the hypocrisy live in action. How James Hayes starts to have a contentious argument with antisocial, and it's not antisocial that's saying pull, it's James Hayes who I'm gonna pull up, do this. And Kwame Brown literally just dealt with a situation with Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes, both threatening physical violence against him. And he was adamant, adamantly against all of those, all of that. But because James Hayes is siding with him, coming to his defense, well, well that, that no longer matters. It's, no, it's, it's not the time to intervene and say, no, we're not gonna allow this, this conversation to go that way. But he allows it to continue because again, it's somebody coming to his defense. It's not about two black brothers and stop and making them get, making sure they get along, letting them know it's just a debate. It's not about that. It's about looking right and sounding right. Look, look I'm gonna go ahead and let it play a little bit more because LVZ had a very, very interesting title. Hypocrite or hero. I want you guys to be the judge. You you guys, you guys have watched the Kwame Brown videos. I want you guys to let you guys be the judge of how this unfolds and plays out with Antisocial and James Hayes. Uh, that's some ho shit. You just asked the man why you took so long to play that. Hey, James. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. 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 Hold Man, listen, the only thing I'm saying, he want Kwame Brown to fuck up his money and feed, stop feeding his family to go at Stephen A. Smith trying to ruin his career. That man did the right thing. I'm going to keep my mouth closed, let it call that dealt, take the money that they gave me, do what's right by it. I ain't the type of nigga that's going to be out here on front street trying to be in no, like y'all said, Lamborghini, the Bugatti, live above my means. But now you're going to get mad because I'm defending myself after these niggas still cooking me. These niggas on two podcasts and my name ain't got nothing to do with none of this shit. Gina Bust ain't gonna talk bad about me, but this nigga gonna tap him and talk about that was a one man tree. It was three niggas involved. So that's totally disrespect to my motherfucking name, nigga. I'd have took that shit the fucking same way. So what the fuck is you talking about? Facts. Man, you a bitch ass nigga. And I don't give a fuck if you fucking me or not, nigga. I met you on this bitch, nigga. I got cousins in Dallas, New Orleans, everywhere, nigga. I stand ten toes down by my motherfucking self. I don't need no motherfucking help, boy. Don't get this shit twisted, boy. I'll come out of retirement tonight, nigga. And it Turn ain't up. nothing to me. Turn it up. ain't nothing to, to me. To do all what? To do what? Yeah, to come check your ass, nigga. Like <laughs> <I> <laughs> He'll come out of retirement to come check him. Kwame Brown. The new voice of the community, completely, c completely win at Stephen Jackson and Matt Barnes when the conversation turned left. But now we see the true colors right here, because now James Hayes, who looks like he's ultimately simping for Kwame Brown, to me, if you guys see something different, let me know. And because he's simping for Kwame Brown, Kwame Brown is now condoning the potential violence. It, now it's not time. So now we now we see when shit gets real, Kwame Brown is definitely not going to step in. He's not going to stand 10 toes on his own principles that he's talked about on his channel. Two black men going at each other is not, especially publicly on a public media uh, platform. It shouldn't be going down like that. He's just sitting back smoking his hookah. Hasn't said a word against it. Nah, let's not do that. Let's not have that conversation. It's just basketball. Either way, everybody has a difference of opinions. Let's move on. Let's talk about something else. If this, nope, not even that. Sit back smoking the hookah. James Hayes in, indicting himself on live, on live, on live media. I'm gonna come out of retirement. I'm gonna come down to Dallas and check you. I got people in Dallas. That, that, that's, what, that's what we're getting at. Play a little bit more. I can make two phone calls in Dallas right now, nigga, nigga. And come Call see your nigga. You and come see your nigga. bitch ass. Don't Call get me started, nigga. nigga. You know Don't get me started. Call you a nigga. coon, nigga. You Call a fucking nigga. coon, nigga. Bitch. That's you why you coon. working two jobs right now. Yeah, and I got in a white man ass. Man, ain't about, about the money, nigga. I'd rather have respect the than money, you bitch. You. I'd rather have respect than. Now, the, listen to this. This James Hayes just said, "I would rather have respect than money." 
See, when you start talking too much, you eat to yourself. Because he literally just told Kwame Brown, I understand why you didn't speak up for yourself. You needed to go get that money. So he tells Kwame Brown, because he's simping for Kwame Brown, he tells Kwame Brown, I understand. He says, I understand why you didn't say nothing to speak up for yourself, because you're trying to get that money. When he gets into an argument with antisocial, his true feelings come out. I don't give a fuck about money. It's about my respect. You literally just contradicted yourself in less than five minutes because you were fake with one person and your true colors came out a minute later in talking to antisocial in a whole nother conversation. And we've, we've and, the, and the crazy thing is, we've heard you say that you literally just contradicted yourself. You just told Kwame Brown, I understand why you were silent and got disrespected while you were playing just to collect the money. But then he says, I don't care about the money. It's about my respect. Did y'all just catch that? Let me, I'm going to run that back just so you guys can hear. It. Because again, I don't make this stuff up. People get mad at me for ethering people. All I do is replay stuff that you say. And I just give my thoughts on it. I'm not, this, that's just my thought. I want you guys to tell me if I'm right or wrong. Bitch ass. Don't get me started, nigga. nigga. You know what's Don't get me started. Call you a coon, nigga. nigga. You a clown coon, nigga. nigga. That's why you, you working two jobs right now. Yeah, and I got kids in the white man ass. Man, ain't about. about the money, nigga. I'd rather have respect than money, you bitch. You. I would rather have respect than money, you bitch. You. That's what he says. I would rather have respect than money. But he didn't give Kwame Brown those same sentiments. Why did he not? Why did he not say Kwame Brown? Look, I, I fuck with you, but I would rather have respect than money. You should have said something to Stephen A. when that was going down. He literally just told Kwame Brown, I understand why you didn't say nothing. Get your money. Contradicted yourself that fast. This is why people cannot debate with me. Because I pull up facts like this and you look dumb trying to argue with me. Again, it's FYF debates. Y'all know we go over everything with a fine tooth and comb. FYF debates, fine tooth and comb. The only way you can come at me, the only way you can try to ether me is by trying to attack me personally all right that's the only way you can people like lb can't debate with me not on the same intellectual level at all not at all and, and again my platform is open if anybody wants to put that to the test really the only person that's actually came over is, is my heart and we've had a lot of great conversations so let and, and, and on my platform i'm not going to let it turn left the way y'all try to let it turn left, what the way y'all try to get hit. Because I have nothing to prove. I don't need to prove my toughness over the internet by threatening to send somebody or come to another town. Because you because you get ether. Because you caught up in your feelings. That's what I call female tendencies. That's one of the reasons why the black community is where we at now. And it's it's happening right in front of you. But ain't nobody stop it. Didn't nobody call it out. You got two people, Tiki TV and Kwame Brown sitting here Kwame Brown supposed to be for the people supposed to be for the cause just called out Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes for doing the same thing and they literally let this unfold publicly on a much bigger platform because obviously all eyes are on Kwame Brown right now you guys saw it you guys saw it let's see what else they got to say because again I think it's just going to turn into a a, a, a simp fest from here on I'd rather have respect than money than you bitch you a nigga, a, nigga, a nigga, I got much respect, nigga. And a nigga gonna always respect me, because you know why? I kept it loyal. I fed the fucking block, nigga. That's why I'm still here. That's why them niggas that's hey, dead man. in jail was fucking phony. Nigga, you can't tell me shit about no real life, bitch. I'm from the real trenches, nigga. And I, I swear to God, I exposed a lot of shit, boy. You better back up out that water. I'm telling you better back out that water. Because I can make one or two phone calls, nigga, and I'll be in Dallas in three hours. I swear to God. And it's just like that. And I ain't coming doing no talking. And I ain't with all that talking. And I don't need no buying money, niggas, because I ain't no snitch. I'm taking my shit. No, 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 no. You won't need no buy money because you snitched on your damn self. You said what you was going to do on Ticket TV in front of tens of thousands of people. 
making yourself look like a fool on Ticket TV in front of in, in front of actually what could have potentially been one of his best live streams ever, which probably was. I mean, if you're talking about viewership, you know, and, and donations and money, yeah, that was probably a big time success for for everybody involved. But but with regards to the the positivity towards the black community, there was a failure. An opportunity for Kwame Brown to stand on some of the things that he's been talking about. Because remember what Kwame Brown said. Kwame Brown said, I don't want to talk about basketball. He wanted to focus on other things that he's been talking about on his channel. And all the while, he's just sitting there smoking his hookah. While this is going down on this platform, you have another man telling him he's going to pull up on him in another town. Essentially, the same thing that played up with Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson when, when they got into it with him. Steven Jackson, he said Steven Jackson was potentially threatening him in DMs or text messages. Matt Barnes hit him up and said, let's pull up. You got clutch points and every clutch points and everybody trying to make it a fight. You got Jamel Hill saying turn on violence and all this stuff. And he comes on his platform and says, no, it's not about violence. And I no, why can't black men just talk it out and do things civilly? And then we see how he handles these situations live in color and in person. That, that that's not that's not me. This is that's no special editing. There's, there's 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 not a special ether to that. That's just me letting it play out in front of you and allowing people to expose themselves. So when it comes to this debate right here, by far, this was hands down antisocial by a long shot. This wasn't even close. Antisocial opened with some strong points. He stayed consistent all the way through. This is the same things. Antisocial was my, on my channel a few days ago saying the same things. Ticket TV came into the channel saying, Anti, say the same things that you were saying the other day. And he did. He didn't turn into a simp or fanboy just because you have a former NBA player on the panel. He, he brought the tough questions and Kwame Brown failed to answer them. Kwame Brown ultimately got emotional, got in his feelings, couldn't answer a single question. All right, ducked and dodged. He evaded every potential question. All right. And, and he, he ultimately, to me, made himself look like a fool. For that right there, I mean, we have to. I mean, you know what? When, when I got people like Elder Rufus, when I got people like LVZ sitting in our Hall of Fame, people who really are doing stuff in the community, people who really deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, people who really giving out Max Ethers, all right? I looked at what Kwame Brown did, how he handled some of the situations, how he initially addressed Stephen A. Smith, how he initially addressed Matt Barnes and them, how he talked about not allowing it to get to violence, talking it out like brothers. I initially thought he deserved a Hall of Fame nomination here on FYL Sports. That definitely, true colors showed themselves. One of the best things that could have happened is he coming on Ticket and take TV and we see the true colors. We see the true nature. Told you, we, we even exposed a few lies. He said it wasn't about basketball, yet he's on his channel explaining to us that per 36 minutes and analytics and this, that, and the other, oh, he was a good player. He's literally trying to convince us that he was a good basketball player on his channel. He's talking about how Jordan did this, worked him out. He couldn't get in the game and do this. But Kobe Bryant called him out multiple times on live TV in front of the media. Could have easily fucked up his money. What could have fucked up your money any more than Kobe Bryant calling you out in front of the world multiple times? Kobe Bryant exposed something that happened in the huddle. Said the man said, I don't want the ball. I'm too nervous to shoot a free throw. Ticket TV even called you out. Kobe Bryant tried to pass you the ball. You turning the ball, flipping and flopping three times in a row. Y'all act like it's me doing this stuff. It's these people. This is why I say... This is, it's, it's probably a match made in heaven because it's confusion mixed with more confusion. It's confusion mixed with more confusion. Kwame Brown is looking confused. Ticket TV and his platform, they all confused, all right? Because they go, they calling everybody a bust one day. Everybody and their mama from this era is a bust. Everybody and their mama don't deserve their money. Everybody and their mama, this, that, and the other. Kwame Brown gets on the show. Yo, you was a great player. You know, Mr. Kwame Brown. Y'all just let me know what y'all think about this video. I know it was long. I know we had to get to it, but man, we really had to break this down to a T. And basically, ultimately, you know, ultimately, you know, when, we, when I look at this situation right here, when I look at how antisocial handled himself, how he executed this ether, he executed this ether perfectly. 
He executed this ether perfectly. He had a few hiccups right there. When Kwame Brown asked who 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 did I um who who did I mention that didn't bring up my name, he didn't have the answers immediately to that. That's okay though. And you, you sometimes you lose a few points in the debate. But for the most part, this was a landslide. Kwame Brown definitely a uh, Hall of Fame nod has been retracted, man. There's no way you can land in the Hall of Fame when you just showed your true colors. Everything you're talking about looks to be fake and phony. I'm just, I'm just calling it what it is. And again, if I'm wrong, come on, let me know. And again, you don't, have, I don't have to do it on my platform. We can do it anywhere. We can have this conversation. I'm just going off what I see, and I'm comparing it to what you've said. That's all I do. If I, if, I'm, if, I, if I just deciphered that incorrectly, let me know. A lot of Kwame Brown fans are going to have a problem with what I'm saying. Again, it's not me really even saying anything. I'm just disseminating the information. <laughs> Crazy, man. Man, we're going man, we to do this, man. We got we to gotta do an instant Hall of Fame vote for antisocial, man. I feel like antisocial put a max ether in. I feel like he put a Max Ether in. I think it's a Hall of Fame nod. Man, put a one in the chat, man. One in the chat if you think Hall of if you think Antisocial gets an immediate induction into the FYF Sports Hall of Fame. Taking on Kwame Brown in a in a in a in a biased in biased territory. He, he obviously he, he went into he he went into a, a panel where he knew he could have got muted, he got blocked, he could have got kicked out the chat at any time. Right? He went he went in a, he went in the panel where he knew he had people like James Hayes and some of these other people who would immediately start simping for Kwame Brown because they can't stand on their own opinions because they can't give an organic thought of their own. He went amongst that crowd and was still able to bring all of the arguments that needed, all of the questions that needed to be presented to Kwame Brown. And Kwame Brown showed that he had zero answers for any of the questions there. If I, I And that's just my evaluation from it. Put a one in the chat if you think antisocial belongs in the FYF Sports Hall of Fame immediately. He has my vote. All right, but we got to let the people decide sometimes on these. We got to give antisocial a vote on that. One in the chat. I'm going to be counting them up later. We're going to be doing a live stream on this video. So, again, we're going to be doing a recap to this video. So, again, make sure you guys are tuning in to Facebook. We're going to be streaming on Facebook and Switch. I want to get everybody's thoughts on this right here. And whether you agree with me or not, you are all welcome to come to the stream and voice your opinion. All right. That's one thing we do here. We give everybody a seat at the table, everybody a voice to speak on what they think is going on here at FYF Sports. There's no censors, no names get blocked. Anybody's allowed on the panel. Anybody's allowed on the panel, whether you with us, for us, against us, I honestly don't care because it's called FYF Sports Debates, not FYF Sports Agree. I don't want a whole bunch of people around me that agree with everything I say. I definitely don't want a whole bunch of people on my panel who are only going to uh, 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 repeat everything that I say and not give any pushback or organic thought. This is why I respect people like Goat Mike and True to King, Antisocial, C Hill, Elder Rufus, LVZ. And at the end of the day, I know for a fact I can still have conversations with these guys and talk about business and real things, and not just pretend and act like and act like I do. I know I can have conversations with people like SB Sports Talks about real business and business opportunities, real legitimate business opportunities, boosting their channel, opportunities with sponsors, opportunity with, with news outlets. I, I, can, I can have those legitimate conversations. I don't have to fake like I am. Just saying. Just saying. No shots at anybody, just saying. Hey, but it's FYF Sports, man. Make sure you guys tune in to our live stream video. Uh, we're going to be going live tonight. We definitely got to chop it up on this particular topic. I know a lot of you guys are going to have thoughts and opinions on this particular video. So we're going to get started early. We're going to be going live at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's probably going to be 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for most people. We're going to be going live on Facebook. All right, so I'm going to put I'm going to put the notification in the community chat. If you don't have Facebook and you just want to jump in the StreamYard live panel, I'm going to put that link in the community chat as well for a lot of you guys in the comments. Look, if you don't have Facebook, just let me know in the comments of this video. And if you want to join the live panel when we go live, I'll just I'll just attach a link to the stream yard under your name because I've seen a number of you guys don't have Facebook. 
or maybe you don't want to put out that personal information, which I'm perfectly fine with that as well. I understand that. Um, so, but we still can let you in the stream yard because even if you're on Twitch or if you're on Facebook, I see all the messages in one area. And if you come in the stream bar, stream yard, everybody can still see the debate. Uh, re, we rebroadcast all streams back on YouTube. So even if you miss it, if you can't chime in, we're going to be replaying it on YouTube the following day. So again, salute to everybody for tuning into today's video. Uh, again, make sure you let me know your thoughts on on this particular uh, on on this particular video. What are your thoughts? How did antisocial do in the debate? I give them a nine out of ten, nine and a half out of ten. You know, with the circumstances. I don't think he was on an even playing field. Uh, I think Kwame Brown made it tough for Anti by 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 filibustering the whole time. But again, that's just my opinion. That's my thoughts. Hey, this is FYF Sports, man. It's been another great podcast episode. We got a lot more sports and news coming your way this week. So make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you follow us on all social media outlets. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch. I mean, we have it all, all right? We just opened our Discord up. So we have a Discord as well. Link to all of these things are gonna be in the description of the video. Make sure you follow us so you can stay in tune with everything we have going on here at FYF Sports. The FYF Sports Community Basketball event, it is still slated for July 3rd and July 4th, all right? God willing, and hopefully we can get this thing scheduled. But again, we still have not hit our donation goal to make it happen, all right? The sponsors need to see us hit our donation goal before they're willing to step in. And, 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 and also pitch in to make it happen. So again, we gotta make it happen as a community if we wanna see it happen. Either way, if we can't have the community event on July 3rd or July 4th, if we haven't had our donation go, we'll just push the date back. It's gonna happen in 2021. So again, the closer we get to that date, obviously it's gonna change some tentative dates. We may push it back, but I just love, I would love to have it on that date. July 4th, that July 4th weekend where I know everybody's gonna probably be off work. It's gonna be on a weekend. All right, we can get a big crowd there. I have a great venue um, that I'm in contact with people with. Um, now that some of the COVID restrictions have lessened, obviously we're going to have to have some protocols in place. But you know, you know, we it's still set up to be a great event out in Indiana, a central location where I know a lot of people from the Midwest are close to. If you're in the West Coast or in Texas or anything like that, if you're outside of five hours, I really want to make sure we can get flight money put together to get you guys flight to this one central location so we can have a crazy event. So make sure you guys, if you want to participate in the FYF Sports Community Basketball Game, email us. Email is in the link to this video, business at FYFSports.com. Email us. Let us know your credentials. If you play college, high school, wherever, wherever you play, let us know because it needs to be a competitive game. Hey, but it's FYF Sports, man. It's been a great podcast reaction video man i love doing this this is what we do here at fyf sports debates make sure you chime in with your thoughts hey but it's fyf sports man um we'll be back to tonight with more sports and news but until then it's fyf sports just a little FYI, FYF, 20K sub, six months, what's next? They been hating at first, now they calling us the best. Hit them YouTube, tell them cut the check. It's a FYI, FYF, 20K sub, six months, what's next? Woo, fuck your feelings, we all know who the real is. I be getting to it, ain't wasting no time. Walking straight in, we ain't waiting in line. Fuck your feelings, you don't care about mine. You a YouTube gangster, don't be yelling out slime. Or you talking LB, talking Tinky TV. Ain't nobody watching them, all the viewers be sleep. Five years. And all your subs is your friends Take a TV, watch your cars again Dang. Just a little FYI, FYF 20K sub, six months, what's next? They been hating at first, now they calling us the best Hit up YouTube, tell them cut the check It's a FYI, FYF 20K sub, six months, what's next? Woo, fuck your feelings We all know who the real is all know, shop don't close Working 24, trying to make the channel grow Look at them, pointing fingers, hating on the low You can't compete with our podcast show Couldn't make it in the league, so we got on TV Crying by LeBron like a little baby You must be crazy, trying to ever play me Oh, you super tough, tough until it's time to say cheese Just a little FYI, FYF 20K sub, six months, what's next? They been hating at first, now they calling us the best Hit up YouTube, tell them cut the check It's a FYI, FYF 20K sub, six months, what's next? Woo, fuck your feelings